All right, here we go. Are we live? I think we're live. All right. All right, I'm going to be a little I'm a little nervous. I'm a little nervous about this one, all right, people? So it is going to be... Um, Let's see. So, yeah. So, first off, we should probably do some sound check. Can people hear me? All right, can you hear me? And if you can hear me, leave a comment. I can see there's some people here, so welcome, everybody. Uh, can people hear me, and can you hear the piano? All right. Can you hear? I'm playing a little something. Nothing big, but... Can you hear the piano? Can you hear me? Wonderful. Awesome. Welcome. Welcome, Lingo fan. Welcome, Alex. Welcome, Pierre. Oh, wait. Awesome. So people can hear me. Great. So let's get started. Today, I like I said, I'm a little nervous. This is the most ambitious stream I have ever done. As you can see, I have a completely empty DAW here. And over the course of the next several hours, I imagine, I am going to go from an empty DAW to a fully orchestrated, fully arranged piece of music. Um, it's going to be five minutes long. One minute for each year that I have been doing tutorials because it's the channel's birthday. Yay, happy birthday to the channel. Um, and yeah, so it's going to be a good time. I'm going to start putting together a lot of the lessons and tutorials that I have shared over the year to create a workflow for putting a new piece of music together. Speaking of which, you can find the workflow I will be using uh, on my website. So you go to tabletopcomposer.com, go to the bookshop. And right here, it does not have an image. Everything on my channel is 15% off. Today is the last day of the sale. But I am going to pop this in here. You can get the workflow. Workflow for today's challenge. You can get that. Oops. There we go. I'm going to do that. So yeah, it's in the comments. You can see it now. But let's get started, shall we? I am actually going to pull up the workflow right here so this is what you can buy you can follow along for free or right, you don't have to buy but if you want to show support you can pay for it this is what you're going to get but step one is planning the structure all right so this needs to be a five minute piece of music so i'm going to do some quick math all right so let's try 60 bpm let's pull up a calculator so to make sure that this piece is five minutes long if it's 60 beats per minute, that means 60 beats times 5 minutes is going to be 300 beats. I will write this in 4 4 times, so we will divide that by 4. We need 75 measures. If I divide that by 8, because my average phrase length is 8, then it's 9. About 9 phrases that we'll be working with. So first, let's just do this. 75... So I'm going to just put this, there we go. This is the length of the music that I need to come up with. And if there's nine phrases, I need to come up with a structure. So let's actually write all this down, shall we? Um, Welcome, Cranberry Cola. Welcome, Alex. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Yes, uh, I, I'm excited. I really am. I have no idea. Like, I, I didn't expect the channel to get so big in five years. I really didn't. I just kind of did, did this for myself. So I'm excited to see what the next five years are going to bring. All right. So step one, structure. We'll say some math. All right. Uh, five minutes equal at, we'll say, at 60 BPM equals 75, uh, 300 beats. 75 measures and we said about nine point like what three seven phrases so i'm gonna say this probably works well if we cut this down to if we do a simple uh a simple a b a structure ternary form and a equals two phrases B equals two phrases, and then A return equals two phrases. Um, that would bring us to six phrases. So six times, um, I'm terrible at this. So six phrases, they are each eight minus 75. So minus times negative one is 
I don't know. It wasn't supposed to be 27. Anyways. So anyways, 27 divided by 8. That gives us about three phrases left still. So, um, let's try. What's structure? Um, no, ship your car. No, no, you're not late to the stream. This is, this is going to be hours long. All right, people. I have no idea how long. I've got lots of caffeine on my counter. I've got lots of energy drinks. Just no idea how long the stream is. Uh, uh, it's going to go. But uh, actually, instead of doing ABA, let's do A, B, A, C, A, D. So a rondo form. So this would be six phrases. And if we do two, four, six, eight. So let's actually do an A, B, A, C. We'll go A equals two, B equals two. C, uh, A return equals two phrases. Uh, and then C equals two phrases. So this will give us eight phrases out of the 9.37 that we need to make this three five minutes long. So I think that's pretty good. Uh, then that gives us time for an intro. It gives us the time for a little bit of transition. So this is what I'm going with. This is going to be my structure. My structure will be an A, B, A, C piece at 60 beats per minute. So I need to create at least three different two phrase long themes. Um, let's see here. Now I've already lost a myth. Oh yeah, sorry. It's not. It's not all going to be math. If you want, yeah. So don't worry. This. So basically, what I'm doing here is step one. All right. So here it says musical structure is essentially just the number and order of different themes that you use in a piece of music. All right. What I am doing right now is I have set a challenge that I need to write a five-minute piece of music. So, just to kind of make sure that I can keep this structured and fast since I have to do all of it live, I'm just doing some math ahead of time to figure out, all right, how many phrases is that? How many themes is that? So, if you want my process that I'm doing right here, it's written right here. I've got the link. You can buy this for like $4.25 because it's all on sale. Uh, it's a six-page uh, workflow that shows exactly what I'm doing today. But basically, this first step, all I need to figure out is what is my tempo, what structure am I using, and how many different themes or melodies do I need. If you're doing this on your own, you don't need to do this mathematically. In fact, I've got a couple of videos in the workflow that recommend this. Um, and my Melody for Composers Part 4 video talks about how you can use story. All right, if you have a story, the way you find your structure is like, all right, so this happens, this happens, and this happens. There are three scenes in my story that I want to show. So there's about like three sections of my music that I need. Um, so right now I'm just doing a bunch of math, and all of that math is all that fancy stuff uh, is just to say um, for my music. So step one, we'll say step one for structure uh, is A, B, A, C structure. Uh, each section, we'll say two phrases each section. Section at 60 beats per minute in 4-4 four, four time. All right? So that should be it for the math. And then I'll plus, uh, plus intro. All right? So A, B, A, C, this is my structure. So step two... Sketch themes. So for sketch two, step two, you'll see draft all the themes I need. So of course, we've got all of this kind of stuff that you can follow along with if you'd like. But basically, I know that I need a theme. I'll do binary form. B theme, also binary form, meaning just two phrases. And C theme, also binary. So I need to write three themes for this. So let's just dive in, shall we? All right, so let's start with the first one. Let's just do an eight bar idea. All right, so how's everybody doing? Uh, yeah, what's up, everybody? Any questions? What? Uh, so what's the key? I don't know. I'm figuring that out right now. Um, I'm going to use sentence structure to come up with a chord progression. So let's do A, C, E, and then, of course... D major, A minor. Oh, favorite chord combination. So if I'm using sentence structure to create a chord progression, all that means is I've got my two bar idea. 
So now I need to repeat it. Sometimes with a little bit of change. Don't care much for that. So what if we went, instead of F sharp minor, we went to F major. Uh, let's do D minor instead. I'm just being picky because I want to write something I like. So there we go. Yep, that, I like that sound a bit better. So I've got my main idea. Then I've repeated my main idea with just a little bit of variation. The variation being that I went from A minor to D major over here, but I went from A minor to D minor over here. So there's only a one note difference between these two. So then in sentence structure, it goes establish an idea, repeat an idea with a little bit of variation, then create a new idea. So we'll do, let's say, let's try E minor. And then we'll do A minor. Let's try this. Let's do actually G major. I kind of like the idea of keeping a lot of common tones. And then we'll do... And we'll just hold this one out, shall we, for my cadence. So sentence structure goes, establish an idea, repeat the idea with a little bit of variation, introduce a new idea, and then find a way to end it with a cadence. And so for this cadence, I'm just going to hold it out. I'm just going to hold out that E major. Awesome. So I've got my chord progression. Let's just add a basic bass line underneath here. So I'm going to take the roots from each chord, A to D, A, D, E, and we'll do G, then E again. Let's lower the velocity to separate them slightly. needs to be down to zero percent so we don't have there we go so we don't have little issues like that um so yeah i've got my chords i've got a very simple bass line that i'm probably going to adjust because i don't like how much movement there is like large leaps so let's start building a melody on top shall we let's do period structure for the melody so for the melody if you've been following me around if i have to do a quick melody I have a very specific process that I use. I've got my chords. I always start with the chords first, and then I'm just going to create a basic shape for my melody using two notes for each chord. So we'll do C and E, then we'll do F and D. So period structure says have an idea, come up with a new idea, then repeat the original idea. So we'll go, um, go up, then, Come back down and again these aren't exactly the same ideas but they share the same basic shape you can have a bit of variation so we all then we have a new idea then we repeat the original idea a little bit of variation so now we need to come up with a new idea so if these move up and down let's try going down then up And then the final part, so, so it's period structure says introduce an idea, have a new idea, repeat the same basic idea with a little bit of variation, and then find a way to end it. So we're just going to go, we'll go, here we go, just like that. So now we have a very bare bones melody on top.
So now the next step, once we've got our basic shape for the melody, is to add some rhythm to it. Do that. So then again, following period structure, we've got the main rhythm here. I'm just adding some random rhythms. This is going to have its own idea, but then this over here should repeat the same basic rhythmic idea. And then let's find a different way to do this one. Actually, you know what? I like the idea of using triplets. Let's do that instead. So everybody's day doing. This is a different time that I'm used to streaming. But I figured if I did the usual time at three, I'd be like all I'd be going way too late. Cause I still have no idea what to expect from this. So then let's do the reverse over here. So let's listen to this rhythm. I don't like that sound. I don't like that. You know what? Yeah. Screw it, let's just do a complete repetition. I like the sound of the D major too much. All right, so very lackluster at the moment but that's fine because now once we've got our basic shape and we've added some rhythm to it it's time to start exploring a little bit so what i like to do is i like to take the shorter note values and i like to move them around a little bit so let's go Nope, that's not it. Let's see. What about that? What if we did that? Actually... What if we move this up? And of course, like I said, just because you start out with one strategy, just because I started out with a very kind of academic do this, this, and this, doesn't mean that there's not room for if you hear an idea that you like, you can't continue it. I kind of like that. Let's try to go with that. In fact, I like this idea quite a bit. So I'm going to scrap what I did over here. And I'm going to just go with sentence structure for this. I'm going to repeat this idea. No, let's not do that. Let's go.
see here. So getting some comments. Uh, it's just past four in the afternoon in Sweden, so it's perfect stream time for up here. Awesome! I'm glad, beer. Uh, Matt Lewis, welcome, welcome. It's 8.30 p.m. there. Awesome! So yeah, the, the earlier timing does work for some people. That's good. Um, yeah, awesome. So we're just kind of hanging out here. So actually, let's hold this over. I will go over here. Let's play this. So now let's play this in because this MIDI performance is driving me crazy. We'll add the metronome on. So that was, oops, where did it go? Let's see here. We'll quantize these to quarter notes. Uh, hopefully you guys aren't getting sick of this already. What if we did right on me one? Um, not sure if I like that. What do you guys think? Um, let's see. Just do an eighth note here. Da, da. Da, 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 da. Let's try that. Um, not sure if I like that. Not sure if I like how early it goes. So let's let's You know what? yeah, let's just have it be on beat one. So let's end it uh goes over here. Let's see here. So if it's sentence structure, we've got this idea here. We've repeated the idea with a little bit of repetition. So now let's, we gotta get a new idea. And I am doing the opposite of what I said I was gonna do. Cause when I started here, I had this whole process. I had this whole workflow and I'm still gonna follow this workflow, but the workflow is here to make sure that I didn't get lost in different ideas or anything because I'm trying to keep this from going on for like 12 hours, but we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Um. Ships on Kerr. It sounds like fantasy music. I like it too. It's it's that two those two chords, the A minor to D major. 
I love those sounds. You hear it all the time in my music. Sometimes I disguise it a little bit by going in the opposite direction. Like D major to A minor or some combination like that. Um, it is for my piece, The Great Lion. Mikey's theme from the play I scored last year was built off this idea. It just feels like a, a very powerful sense of wonder and fantasy that I love. Um, bring some tension. Yes, the C over the D major brings a lot of tension that I'm liking to. I'm liking that. Okay, so next one, let's do, need to fill something out. So let's do E and then do G and then B, then... D. So we've got our ideas, uh, our new idea. So uh, again, sentence structure, start with an idea, repeat the same basic idea with a bit of variation, and then create a new idea, which I'm just realizing this is basically the same idea. So let's actually change that. Let's go. So let's raise my little 25 key keyboard up. So yeah, let's do, let's start with B. Let's try that. I feel like that doesn't have as much enough tension. Get rid of that A. Roughly get that on the offbeat. Oh, this is what taking way too long to write one of my three <laughs> melodies. Oh well, let's do this. Try doing triple eighth notes, a nice build. Try, what if we did sixteenth notes instead of six? This is risky, because right now my range is A to D. And most good melodies, singable melodies, will stay from A to A, just like one octave. 
And the highest you can go before it starts to get a little tricky is an octave plus a perfect fifth. So theoretically, if my lowest note is A, from a best practices, I do not want to go higher than this E. And that's because typically you want a melody that is singable, hummable, whistleable, because if the audience can sing along and whistle it and have it stuck in their head when they leave the theater, it's more likely to be remembered. And the average person has a range of singing where they can go from basically an octave. So I would theoretically want to keep my melody between these two notes. If A is my lowest note, I wouldn't want to go higher than A. I already am. And so the highest I can theoretically play around with before I'm starting to get kind of risky territory is this E. So I think we're probably good. And let's just do, we'll bring it back down. Let's listen to this. No, I'm still not liking that. So I like going to that B. What if I try that? Da, 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 da. I'm gonna add some like little rhythmic ideas underneath to keep it bit the momentum building. Good enough for now. Um, let's see, comments, comments. Let's see here. Um, somebody saw uh, Hey, man, thanks for doing it. It was uh, you know, looking forward to it. Oh, thank you. My pleasure, Deborah. I'm uh, Debraj uh, Day. I'm sorry. I am terrible at pronouncing names. 
Debrage Day. Yeah, I'm, I've am i been looking forward to this too. I was like, not gonna lie, I was nervous about this stream. Still am a little bit, just because it's a big undertaking. But I, it's, I think it's fun. I'm, I'm looking, f I'm enjoying the challenge so far. Um, some grace notes would sound very nice, wouldn't it? Um, and yeah, Pierre, it is good to be picky. I agree. I'm trying, I want this to be a good piece of music. Uh, Alex, welcome, welcome. So. Let's merge these. So yeah, let's play this in, shall we? I'll raise that an octave. I'll bring in the timer. Come to think of it. Do I really want these to be triplets? Actually, now I'm thinking about it. I might be. What if we just turn them into regular eighth notes? Let's see how this would sound. Nah, I like the other one better. You know what? I won't worry about playing it in just because I'm terrible at playing. But I'll at least play in the chords because these are really bothering me. Drop these in octave. Let's do this. I started using a sustain pedal, did it? All right, let's just, all right. Let's see, all kinds of weird things happening in the stream, but that's okay, that's part of being live. All right, so let's see here. All right, so let's do it. One. That was my bad. That was supposed to be an E major, not E minor. Let's delete those chords. And let's lower, we'll play around with the bass line later. And this last part starts to slow down the melody a little bit, but we'll comp or I'll I'll adjust for that with the accompaniment. So we've got our first theme done, and like I said, I'll probably be adding some more stuff, like Ship Shankar recommended, uh, some grace notes and stuff. But for now, since I don't want this to take all day, let's just say. This is theme A is done, or the sketch is done. 
So then, if you remember from earlier in the stream, decided to make sure all of this lasts for how long it needs to last. It's an A, B, A, C structure. So now it's time for a B theme. And these will all be binary themes. Right now, this is just once. Um, I will be basically just repeating it and making some adjustments. So let's do the... Let's do the B theme now, shall we? Um, let's see here. So the B theme... The first thing we need to do is again, if you want to follow along with the workflow that I've put together for this stream, you can find this on my website. You can follow along for free just here, but if you want to purchase it yourself for like four bucks, 25 cents or something like that, cause it's five bucks, but it's on sale for 15% off. You can just find it on my website. Um, let's see here. Uh, welcome Alex, black hole studio. Am I the only one hearing some Harry Potter and some kind of Lord of the Rings in this melody? Um, it would sound great in an alto recorder. That does sound like a cool idea. We are going to orchestrate that. So maybe a flute or like a recorder would be really fun. And Black Hole Studio, getting the Harry Potter vibes and the Lord of the Rings vibes. I think it's a couple of things. I think it's definitely that mystical kind of... Oops. Piano's not playing. Uh, a minor to D major. Love that chord combination. But I think it's also the use of like large leaps. Right, so losing lots of large movement is a t very kind of heroic, adventurous sound. So, instead of say something more conjunct, conjunct meaning there's less leaps, less large movements. In fact, since this is our primary theme, we need to come up with some ways to make the B theme sound a bit different. So obviously, the first thing we can do is we can change the harmony. So instead of having the... Instead of having that kind of harmony, what if we did something more major? And I'm gonna take a different approach for this one. Instead of going with like a sentence structure approach, what if we just do a traditional uh, functional harmony? So then if you want to learn how to do this approach to chords, uh, this is very much, uh, this I have a whole playlist, Harmony for Composers, that discusses this approach. But I'm basically going to start with uh, the key. We'll say, let's do C major for now. Just to keep things easier, we can change the key later. So C major, I will start with my tonic. I will end with some kind of cadence and then i'm going to follow just fill out the remaining space with a strong weak pattern so c major is a strong chord in the key of c major uh again i have so many videos explaining why if you guys want me to explain something as i go let me know but for the sake of time i'm just focusing on composing and not so much on teaching so we will go c major then let's do d minor i'm going to emphasize minor chords in this one so then we'll do a minor and then why not do D minor again? Then we'll do A minor again. And then we'll do <laughs> D minor. I feel like this is too repetitive, but we'll see. In fact, instead of doing A minor here, let's do Do an E minor. Oh, uh, that would actually break the pattern. So let's actually go back. So let's actually do this F major. So we'll go F major, then we'll do E minor. And then let's see. So, uh, let's do E minor. Let's do so. It goes C major, D minor, A minor, F major, E minor, minor. We'll do G major. Yeah. 
No, let's not do. Hold up. Let's do D minor again. And then we'll end with a plagal cadence. I mean, we'll just end on the four chord. So let's listen to the chord progression. Sustain chord is still going strong. What if instead of that, instead of going, yeah, what if instead we just went to F major, straight into F major, and we did more of a romantic cadence? So we'll go C down here, D, just making the bass line now. Let's voice lead a little bit more. So this will be, so these would need to come down. And then let's do, that's good, that's good, that's good. That's fine, that's fine. So F major, yep. So yeah, that looks fine. So we've got a decent chord progression there. So now it's in a different key. It's a bit more major harmony. So let's try making something a bit more conjunct. So the last melody used lots of leaps. Let's make a melody this time that moves uh, with uh, moves much more stepwise. So let's do same process we started with last time. And then we'll go down to... A. So we've got our main idea. Let's create a new. Let's do pay, uh, Let's do uh, period structure for this one. So same well, initial idea, then create a new idea. So then we'll go down to so A minor. So then we'll go down to we'll just do A. We'll do F. Then we'll do C. Then we need to repeat our idea, making any changes that may need to be done to make sure it fits with the chord. E and G both fit with E minor. F and A do not fit for G major. So we will do... A little bit of difference. And then we just find a way to end it. And so here we've got the basic shape of our melody. Stain chord is pedal is driving me crazy. All right, so there we've got the basic shape. And then I said I wanted to make this one more conjunct. Let's make it a little less um, rhythmic as well. This is going to be a very boring melody. We'll just make it very expressive. Oh, I know. So this is 
so this is the main idea this is period structure so we need to come up with a new rhythmic idea let's just do the inverse shall we And then we need to repeat the same basic idea because again, period structure goes one idea, new idea, repeat the original idea. Let's try doing F here, then B. That's a tritone, so it'd be a little crunchy. Um, so let's listen to this. And then we would kind of repeat the idea so that's good i think that's decent we'll change it again we'll make some adjustments when it comes time to it but right now i'm just trying to get my main themes figured out so let's see here anyone else got any comments or anything wow this is a popular stream much more popular than the usual one so welcome everybody if you're new welcome if this is a better time for you that's awesome um let's see yes uh so it's like <laughs> Debraj Day, it's like an isekai anime soundtrack. I know what isekai anime is. I actually haven't watched a lot of it. I think the only one, I don't know, does Sword Art Online count as an isekai? And even then, I've watched the Sword Art Online abridged, the like, comedy series, way more times than I've seen the original one. Um, Yeah, this one does have a much more romantic sound. And it's honestly largely because of that last cadence. So the romantic cadence, the whole... That is a great way to end a lot of romantic cues. Boring on the line of cliche. And all that is, is a major four. Turn it into a minor four. And then go to a one. If you want to make it even better, one of the regulars, Tamashi, who's not on here, I don't think, uh, talked about taking the, the minor and turning it into a six. So, quick music theory break. Let's explain this, shall we? So, in a major key... The major scale goes C, D, E, F, G, A, B. And then it repeats C, D, E, F, G, A, B. So the chords from this are each named after their quality and their order of appearance. So when you hear a major four, it means, all right, four from the bottom, one, two, three, four, F major. And in C major, the four chord or the fourth chord in order of the scale is a major chord so we call it the major fourth so to create a romantic cadence you start with the major four which in this case is an f major then you turn it into a minor by taking that third and just dropping it so it goes from f major and then you go home to the one chord Now, ways that you can make this sound even more romantic is for the second one, after you've turned it into a minor, take C and raise it to the next one in order. So that top number, that C, which is the five, meaning that it's just one, skip two, add three, skip four, add five. That's how you make chords. You go add one, skip number two, which is D. So add the third in order, excuse me, on the scale, which would be E. Skip the fourth, which would be F, and add the fifth, G. And so in F major, it's the same thing. Add one, skip two, add three, skip four, add five. So the five here, and you would just swap it out for the next one up in the scale, if that makes sense. And that is the romantic cadence. You can figure this out without a scale by just saying, all right, what chord are you going to end on? You're going to end on a C major. That's where you want to end. So you go, all right, what is a perfect fourth up above from C? Perfect fourth, that's five semitones. So that's an F. One, two, three, four, five. You are going to build a major chord out of that. So F being our score, we make an F major. You are going to split that in half. You are going to take the middle note and drop it down one. And take the top note and raise it up two. 
Ta-da! A beautiful, lovely, romantic cadence. And that's somewhat of what we're doing here. Uh, I have a half cadence, which means it starts the cadence, but it never finishes it. And that means that when we loop this, it's going to have a beautiful little starting point again. I have got to stop that sustain pedal. just start over here. See? Cool. And we'll get this a lot more expressive, a lot more interesting um, once we've got an actual arrangement going on. Um, Let's see here. Awesome. So we got some cool... Uh, awesome. Got some cool kind of conversations. Uh, let's see here. So let's find our third theme. Because remember, if you are just joining... The beginning was I figured out the structure. To make this a five minute piece of music at 60 beat PM, uh, I'm gonna need four, I'm gonna need a little over nine phrases. So if I have an A, B, A, C structure, and each of these are two phrases long, that gives me eight, so that's enough time for an intro that I can add in. Uh, so if I'm using an A, B, A, C structure, I am responsible for creating at least three themes, an A, B, and a C. I have binary in here, just meaning that I'm going to repeat them, all right? So it's going to probably be like rounded binary or something like that. Um, so now I just need a C theme, all right? So we've got, let's listen to our two themes already, shall we? Let's listen to them again and then figure out what kind of personality we want the third theme to have. So this is the primary theme. This is the A theme. It's going to appear twice. Then we have a romantic theme, and then we have some kind of other theme that we need. Gonna open some more caffeine. And then in the full piece, we will repeat that one before getting to this one. And then that one we'll, we'll repeat before we go back to this theme. So then the question is, how do we end the piece? Do we want something heroic? Do we want something aggressive? Let's go heroic. All right, let's, shall we do a heroic? Um, let's see here. Oh, I got, con I got uh, tag. Yes, was trying orchestration for a while and tabletop composer is really helping me. Awesome. Thank you. I, that makes me really happy. That is true. So, Kind of this whole celebration, this whole thing of me writing music live is to celebrate five years, people. I've been doing this for five years on YouTube, which is crazy. Um, which I, I can't believe that it, at times it feels like the time has gone by so fast. At other times it feels like it's dragged on. It's been much longer. I don't know what to think, but I just feel very blessed. I feel very blessed. I feel very fortunate to do this and I really enjoy it. And I want to thank all of you. All right. So thank you very much for letting me do this. It's... It's kind of my dream job, so I, I really appreciate you guys. Um, wonderful, wonderful. So let's come up with a third theme. Let's just make it more heroic, shall we? Let's do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is a good eight bar thing. Um, so we did a minor, we did a major. Let's do let's do a D major. 
Actually, let's just write it in C major so that'll be easier for me. And then we'll do, we'll swap it to D major. So this is the chord progression. All right, so very simple, almost borderline cliche chord progression, but that's fine. Let's take this. You know, we'll just leave it in C major for now. And let's create a more heroic sounding one, shall we? We'll do... Sentence structure, so main idea, repeat the idea with a little variation, and we'll create a new idea. So, so let's do E. See how this sounds. So we're going ham with all these leaps. So let's add a bit of rhythm. We'll chop up some of these. Actually, let's bring this one down. Let's do period structure. I feel like I, every time I've tried to do period structure, I've just uh, sentence structure. I ended, ended up just going back to period structure, but that's fine. This idea that fits for the underlying chord that fits now. that be natural in measure 21 I'll probably change that
So we've got And yeah, I'd say that's probably good enough. We've got our theme, that's in heroic, and I'm thinking we're probably going to end. I'll probably change the structure a little bit, actually. Let's, let's do the quick chord progression, bass line. So I'm thinking I'll probably do an A, B, A, C, A. So basically just rondo. So instead of the intro, we'll start out and we can end with a familiar theme, right? So we got all three themes. All right, so the next step is going to be plugging it into the structure. But first, let's see if there's any more comments. Uh, I had to get any personal changes. I had to learn by myself. That's true. Congrats to all the success with the channel. Thank you, Pierre. Thank you. For a bit more heroic, you go for Picardy third at the end. Um, I could do that. Yeah, so the Picardi third, I'm trying to think of the Picardi third. Is that the F major? Or like F major? So the Picardi third, isn't that the major four to one? Is that another no name for like the plagal cadence? Oh, I should know this, shouldn't I? Um, yeah, Debra J, how would you pronounce, uh, how would you do the uh, Picardi third? Uh, are you looking into live chats recently? Um, the live chats are not accessible on the stream ends. Um, oh, uh, I should be. Yeah, all of my live streams are locking. Yeah, all of them. I will say this. All of my live streams, I have the setting set for the live chat to remain. Um, it's, but it does tell me that it can take a couple, like a whole, like 24 hours for them to load. But yeah, every stream I do, I always have the option click, yes, save the live chat. Um... And on the major instead of the minor. Um, interesting. Well, thank you. Um, let's see here. Let's see. Let's, hmm. First, first off, before I get ahead of myself trying new things, I, I do want to make sure that we're moving along. So let's see, draft all the themes. You know, we got the themes drafted. Again, if you want this document, you can get it on my website for like four bucks. Uh, in fact, I should tell all of you, go to my website Today is the last day of the sale. Everything on my website, everything is 15% off. It has been 15% off all week long to celebrate the uh, five-year anniversary. Uh, this item right here is this workflow that I put together specifically for this live stream. Um, but yeah, you can check out my textbook, 35 chapters, over 400 pages, teaching you everything that you could possibly need to know about composing. My book on emotions and music, the only ebook out there written by a former therapist turned professional ther uh, composer. Got lots of really cool stuff on here, people. So yeah, check it out. Um, let's see here. But the step three is it's time to start mapping the arrangement. So step one, I need to figure out my sound palette. That's easy. I'm just going with a basic orchestra. All right, your sound palette is the basically just the instruments, the playing styles, and the uh, techniques that you're going to allow yourself to choose from while you're arranging your music. I will be arranging my piece in Finale Notation software. I prefer to arrange music with Notation than a DAW, just because then I can focus on the arrangement. If I'm in Cubase, I tend to spend too much time trying to get the exact sound I want out of my sound libraries, and it just drags on and I get distracted. So I prefer Notation software. We will map out the climax of the arrangement, and we will map out the rest of my arrangement. But first, we need to actually copy and paste everything. So if we are doing an A, B, A, C, A structure, to get this to work, I need to actually get everything laid out. So we've got our A section. We'll say A. We have our B section. Let's put this in order like that. Then we will have the return of our A section. Right. 
a returned. Then we will have our C section. And then we will have the return of our A section. And that still leaves us with like what? Three measures for intro material. And we've got a full five minute piece. So bear with me, people. We are going to listen to most of this to see where we want to make any edits, right? Okay, so the Picardy third is the flat major six. So that'd be, oops, where is it? You know, so flat major six, then the flat major seven, and then one. Ooh, I do like that. I do like that quite a bit. That does sound heroic. Um, it's already been an hour. Oh my word. Oh man, this is gonna take forever, isn't it? Let's see here. But we've got we've got the main structure, so a big chunk of it is done. But I am enjoying myself. It did not feel like it had been. Wow, it has been like an hour and eleven minutes already. I'm enjoying myself though, so that's good. Uh, so let's listen to the whole thing. And take notes on where I'd like to make some changes. Repeat it. I'm probably change the key here.
So other than some key changes and a few kind of adjustments to the melody here and there, I think we're probably good. think should we repeat this heroic one or should we go right back to the original because right now we've only got the final one replayed once excuse me So we get the idea. I actually kind of like the idea. What if we do? What if we do a unexpected? There we go. Because I like the pull of. Like, the, into A minor. So, yeah, we're good there. Um, let's see here. Pierre, Picardy third is pretty much when you end them on a major chord, when the minor is expected. I love that the modal mixture things in music. Yes, I do love modal mixture. And thank you for explaining that. Picardy third is one of those things where, like, I know I've heard this a million times, but I've never really used it, so... Or I've never really used the name, personally. I know that it was popularized by the music for Star Trek, hence the name, the Picardy third. Uh, I know that's one of the kind of the little cool nerdy things. Um, De Brage Day, it has a dramatic nature to it. My music or modal mixture? Because yes to both. Uh, I love modal mixture. Anytime you use a chord that's unexpected, the easiest way is to just use, uh, an unexpected chord. So for example, that romantic cadence we talked about, F major, then swapping to F minor is very unexpected. So it creates a more dramatic sound. The reason why A minor to D major has such a dramatic sound is because in the key of A minor, you would expect D minor. But you make it major. And anytime a chord that was supposed to be major because of the key you're in is becomes minor, it has a dramatic and dark effect. Anytime you go to a chord that was supposed to be minor, but now it's major, it has another dramatic, but this time bright effect. And I have so many videos on modal interchange. Uh, again, my videos in my quick theory playlist and my harmony for composers playlist. And another quick kind of, uh, another tip, little ad, the Academy on my website, 100% free music education, free classes. I got four of them so far. I've got several more that I want to add. Um, so maybe like a class about character, like writing character themes and creating themes just in general for film music and how you make music that symbolizes things. Uh, I've been interested in doing a class like that. Maybe a class on like the technical aspects of film scoring. I got all kinds of visions for this. Uh, but for now there are four classes. They are 100% free because that is one of my passions is providing free education because I myself was denied a music education because I couldn't afford it. So that's why this is part of my passion project. And if you would like to support it, there is a spot where you can donate to help a fund future classes, or you can go to my bookshop. And today is the last day of the anniversary sale. 15% off everything, no coupon codes necessary, including my book, my textbook on music composition, which is getting published. It's just taking forever to be turned into a hard copy and to get printed. And then this one, which is my book on portraying emotions with music. Uh, so yeah, awesome. Got some stuff to check out. Um, Douglas Bradley, it has been fun watching the process. Congratulations on five years, but sorry, I have to take off. Well, thank you. First off, thank you very much for the congratulations. Uh, I'm glad you're enjoying it. Um, no worries. I don't expect anyone to stay on here. I think this is probably going to be the easily the longest stream I've ever done. So however long you stay is wonderful. 
Uh, Pierre Bergen, the one flat major six, flat major seven is great. It's the Mario cadence. Yes, the uh, very kind of dramatic. Those sounds like a celebratory sound. Uh, another one that I am partial to is the heroic cadence, which is the. Where is that? Where is it? Where you do like a sus four, then a sus two, and then the final chord that you're actually going for. Oh, uh, there's there are so there's, there's a reason why I freaking love studying music theory. There's just so much cool, fun stuff that you can discover. Um, but let's see here. So the next strap in our step here is mapping the arrangement. So sound palette. I'm just going to use the regular orchestra. I'm going to use a template from Finale. Uh, map out the climax of my music and then map out the rest of the arrangements. So this is pretty simple. Uh, we need to create, let's see here. We have several sections. All right. We have, in fact, I'm not going to do this in here. I'm going to do this over here. All right. In my little notepad. So let's create a new page. see my map let's do normal text all right so we have an a b a c a structure and this comes out as a a1 a2 we have b1 why is it not staying in bold okay beagle come on what is going on here B2, A1, okay, whatever. Uh, we'll say A3, A4, C1, C2, A5 is the structure that we have so far. So this is the structure of the music. And I have to figure out where do I want the climax to be. Pretty easy. I'm thinking the C section. All right, C1 and C2, this is probably going to be the big climax, like the climactic area. Um, so first off, why am I planning my, my climax? The climax of a piece is very important because this is the moment where it feels everything is building up towards. The climax of a piece of music is the moment where it feels the biggest, the most energetic, the most climactic. Every section in your music is going to be related to this climax in terms of how it helps build into or further away from it. So for this kind of little idea of putting together my map, I want to figure out uh, not only where is my climax, which one is going to be the biggest, highest energy, but I also want to figure out what's going to make it sound the most climactic. So in fact, I'm going to combine this into one. I'll combine each of these into one. Uh, one section each. So this section, I think, is going to be my climax. And if I look at what I think is going to make it the most climactic, what's going to give it the biggest energy, um, let's listen to it again, shall we? This is kind of the heroic one, remember? <laughs> So a nice, slow-moving, heroic sound. So the climax, I'm going to say largest instrumentation. Lots of brass. This is going to be a very brass-heavy arrangement. Um, I'm going to say it's going to be a relatively simple texture after a more complex one. So let's say, like, the A sections here, we're going to have, like, counterpoint. This is a very common strategy when you're trying to create a very climactic moment is if you have a very rhythmically active, lots of different layers playing, super complex texture, and then boom, you arrive at a much more simple where everybody is playing the same basic idea, it creates a very large, satisfying payoff. And one of the reasons why is if you think about a very complex texture, if you've got like five different ideas going on, you have to divide all of your musicians between those five layers. Everyone who's playing, they have to play one of those five layers. 
Now, if you move to another to the next section, and now you only got two layers, like a big melody, maybe a little bit of harmonization and a bass line, like two or three layers, that's fewer layers, more instruments for each one. So that's one of the reasons why it feels bigger. Everything's more cohesive. Everything's playing together. There's a lot of reasons, but that's one of the easiest ways to kind of uh, visualize it. We will say uh, modulation. So key change is going to help it feel big. Let's see, what other ideas can we think of? Uh, probably the most octaves and the loudest dynamics. Probably going to throw those in there too. Loudest dynamics, many octaves. Doubling. All right, so lots of doubling. So I'm going to say this is probably good. We don't need to go super in-depth. The main idea is we just want to understand why is this, like where is the climax and what is going to make this moment in the music sound climactic. So once we've done that, once we've figured out that, yes, this little section right here, these 16 bars are where I want it to really pay off. The next step is to figure out what we're doing with all of these other ones. All right. So we're probably going to like start small with these first two, start building in size, then come back down in size a little bit and get much more complex before, boom, we have a big kind of simplified sound very large then we can start coming down in the second half and come back down here so as we create this map the map basically describes the music that you're going to write so it's easier to write music when you have a map saying all right i'm in the first eight measures my description it's got to be pretty intimate pretty kind of pastoral or fantasy based we talked about with the alto recorder earlier uh creating a nice little sound for it we decide all right so that's what we're going to work with it's gotta be small, that's fine. And then, boom, next eight measures, it needs to start getting bigger. I can do that. It's easy to kind of work off that design instead of saying, all right, let's write something here. Let's just complete write something here. Just keep going without a plan, if that makes sense. Uh, let's say, welcome, welcome from Brazil, welcome. Um, yes, uh, ship Shankar, how many screens do I have? Two, I've got two. Yes, I do have two string screens. So on one screen, you are seeing what I am seeing. And on my other screen, uh, this is what I see. I see all of your comments. I see the kind of stream information. And I can also pull up any kind of tabs, like looking at my website and stuff. Um, Ship Shankar, trumpets playing the melody in Asanatos and string. That could be fun for the climax. I'm not going to get that specific yet. Right now, I'm looking more for the vibes. So once I've got my climax mapped out, the next one is to go through each section and basically to cover each of these. All right. So A1, A2, we'll say the A section and we'll split this into A1, A2, shall we? A1, A2. And for each of these, we want to cover a couple of things. We want the size. We want complexity slash movement. We want texture, if available, texture is just the number and types of layers. So if you were to say that something has a polythematic texture, as a fancy way of saying that you've got a melody, a counter melody, and a bass line. That's the basics. You can have other stuff, but that's the main core ideas. If you were to say something has a homophonic texture, that is chords, melody, bass line. Again, you can have other layers, but those that's the real meat and potatoes there. If you were to say something is a monophonic texture, that means you just have a melody. Everybody is playing the same melody, sometimes with the bass line underneath, but the main focus is just one melody. So... The way you change the number and types of layers can have a very big impact on your music. And then we won't have to worry about three pillars or clarity just yet. Um, again, if you want to learn what I mean by these, the three pillars of great orchestration are separation, focus, and balance. Meaning that if you have multiple layers, they all need to sound separate. You need to be able to tell by listening, oh, that's the melody. Oh, that's a counter melody. Those are the chords. That's the bass line. I can pick them all out as being individual ideas. Uh, focus means that once you've separated those ideas, you can still go, but that's the melody. That's the most important part right there. There are these four different layers, but that's the one I'm supposed to focus on. Um, and you don't even have to think consciously of it. Your audience should just know by listening which layer they're supposed to focus on. And the fourth one, the third one, balance is essentially just, um, all else being equal, each layer, once you have separation and focus, they should each be comparable in power and size. And then clarity, these are just some guidelines to make sure that it doesn't get too muddy. So we won't worry about these just yet until we start actually applying instrumentation. 
Um, so if you want to learn my playlist, Advanced Orchestration Techniques on YouTube, uh, this will teach you all of this stuff, as well as, again, the Academy, um, my two classes, Instrumentation, this just introduces you to the different instruments of the orchestra and how to write for them, and Orchestration 2, which is Fundamental Arranging Techniques. It basically breaks down, uh, a lot of the strategies covered in here and more. So again, lots of cool resources for you people. Um, again, if you would like this workflow, if you would like this worksheet that I am using to you to uh, write this music in such an expedited fashion, such a quick fashion, uh, it's on my website. Uh, like like it's like it's for like five bucks, but since everything's on fifteen percent off, it's closer to like four. Let's see here. Um, so yeah, so let's figure this all out, shall we? So the very opening. A1, this theme. I'm thinking I want this to start very small. Start very small and intimate. Um, for complexity and movement, keep it super simple. I want the melody to be immediately memorable. All right, so if I've got a counter melody and chords and an ostinato and all kinds of stuff coming off right off the bat, this one all important melody because this a theme gets repeated the most it's not going to stick out as well so i want this to be super simple so texture wise i'm thinking solo uh melody um minimal support maybe baseline slash uh essential harmony so then a2 so that was this first little block. Next, the second half of the frame, which is the same thing. I'm going to say size. All I'm going to say, start getting a bit bigger. All right. Uh, complexity and movement. Dash movement. Um, start adding more uh, accompanimental material. Still keep movement and complexity minimal uh so texture again types of layers melody doubled so maybe now we have our like our flute maybe now we have a strings playing along with it uh definitely bringing in some harmony now so now that the melody has been established we can now bring in some sustained harmony sustained is what i'm going to put down and then baseline definitely having the baseline in there and the idea here is I'm literally just going to go through and I'm going to fill out each of these ideas for this. Um, so B1, B2, um, and then for each of these we do size, complexity, slash movement, and texture. And the cool thing about this is once I've got it all figured out, this is going to be my guide for orchestration and arranging. Um, all right, got some questions. All right, the climax. Uh, A1 would sound great if it's small and subtle. Very much. A brass chorale for A2. Uh, small and subtle on that too, heroic and big. Possibly brass. I don't think I'm going to introduce the brass this soon, though. I like the idea of the first time the A theme gets heard. Just super simple, super intimate, almost like Hobbit type music, if you think about it. Like from Lord of the Rings. Very simple, very subtle, very intimate, very kind of focused on the melody. So that as we explore and as we get to try out different melodies and try new things, that's when we start to, uh, we can start being more experimental. All right, so uh, B1, B2. Let's re-listen to this theme. All right, so we've got, so first we had our main theme. That's the A theme, kind of adventurous, mystical, magical, all that stuff. So then the second theme is our more romantic theme.
All right, so I'm thinking. Um, let's actually change this. Let's actually let's keep. Oh, that's all. Let's say, but keep small. No, we'll leave it. As a, start. So I'm actually gonna say, start adding more component material. Make it more rhythmically active without pulling attention from the melody. All right, because then we'll say maybe rhythmic chords. Because then I want the co contrast here to be larger. All right, so if we brought in the brass, this is probably where I'd bring in the brass. Maybe the French horns on this melody. Complexity and movement, I want this to come back down. Down. Focus on the new melody. Texture. Chords. Or we'll say melody. Um, we'll say essential harmony. Moving essential tones. And bass line. So then B2 size again. Get larger. Doubling again. And then we'll have the complexity and movement start uh, getting a bit more active again. And then we'll say, again, maybe probably just melody, rhythmic accompaniment, and bass line. Because then A3 and A4, I have this idea of having these be much more complex. Have the size come back down so, for example, like the B1 and B2 become, should feel like an area of local uh, focus slash climax. Uh, so, basically, I want this to feel like, oh, that could be the climax. We're building into the climax. Then, boom. No, we're coming back down. Kind of a, changing the expectations. So, then we'll come back down. Size. Come back down much more complex all right much more movement all right so even though the size comes down i want this to be a more kind of complex idea let's see uh melody ostinato slash counter melody and baseline and two we'll say start building slowly and we'll say here, most complex texture of the piece. Full on counterpoint is what we will do. Uh, polythematic slash rhythmic texture. I mean, there's going to be lots going on. It'll be a very complex texture. So that when we hit the climax, boom, lots of brass. Simple texture after one that was much more complex. Modulation is key change, lots of dynamics. So let's add this. Let's see here. We'll say C1, C2. We'll say size, largest, lots of brass, complexity of movement. Simplify it. And we'll say texture maybe chordal. Meaning that it's a melody, then some chordal accompaniment that follows the same rhythm as the melody, so it feels like an extension of the melody, and then a bass line. Then we'll say size. Come back down a bit, only a bit. We will separate, so complexity, complexity and movement, um, get a bit more complex, but not overly so. So instead of chordal, we might swap back to uh, homophonic texture. Uh, melody plus chords of some sort plus bass line. Or... Uh, now nah, we'll just leave homophonic. 
So then A5, our final section. We will say A5. It's just going to come back down. Come back down. Similar to opening texture. Uh, opening sections. Size, complexity, and movement. Come back down. Um, so, okay, so complexity movement, come back down. Um, maybe, well, no, we'll, 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 we'll keep the complexity a bit higher. Uh, maybe a little more complex. So we could do like melody, counter melody, chords, and bass line. And just like that, we've got our map. We've got a guide showing, basically describing what I want each section to do. So the next step is to follow this map by adjusting the piano sketch. So if we have this first section, and I know from my map that I want this first section to just be very small, very intimate. I want to keep it super simple and just the melody. Uh, let's change this. So it's just a simple solo melody and possibly a bass line. So let's actually flesh out this bass line a little bit. Um, actually, this is probably good. We'll do... So what happens if we just delete the chords, raise this an octave, how's it sound? Let's delete the chords for the first half. We'll leave the essential tones in the second half. So essential tones being notes that are essential to the chords identity. Um, so E. So basically, it's either the root in a triad. It's going to be the root and the third because the fifth doesn't really impact an E to G. That's still an E minor, even if you have the fifth. However, if you change that G, it changes the chord. Um, again, I've talked about this in other live streams and stuff. Um, so then, let's do... Let's leave the D in this one, though, since that would clash less with the A above here. And then we can leave... We can come back down. To, to the B. We do the D. And then G sharp, so we'll do E. And since G sharp is in the melody up there, we'll leave this. Let's raise this all an octave. See what happens if we raise this an octave. All 
All right, so yeah, we got that. So first section, I think that's pretty good. So then section one, that's A1. We've kept it, we've gotten a very small, very intimate size. We've kept the complexity and movement very simple. And the texture, solo melody, minimal, minimal support, we got it. All right, so now it's on to section A2. Um... Uh, Cranberry Cola, this was such a good stream. I'll have to come back for it later. Thank you for sharing your wisdom. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, like I said, this is like what? All right, so it's 12.45. I'm already coming up on like two hours of this. Oh, man. So, yeah, I don't expect people to stay around for the whole stream. And it's going to be around for a while. I've still got quite a ways to go. So it'll be lots of fun still. All the same, stop by, come back whenever you want. As long as I'm going, you're good. Right, so size, uh, size, but we need to start getting bigger. Complexity movement, start adding more complementary material to make it more rhythmically active without pulling attention to the melody. And so my initial idea is melody and rhythmic chords. I'm starting to think, what if it's more of a melody plus counter melody kind of situation? So let's open this up. We've got our... So let's bring this up an octave. Let's delete this one. So let's do what if we did more part writing? So D, F, A, let's, here's what we're going to do. We will drop these down. So we'll keep some nice space clear. So then D, let's mute these. And F, so we will leave the A unmuted. And then we'll come back down to the F. And at this point, I'm just kind of creating a bit of a bass line and a slight, very subtle counter melody. Um, let's do A, and then the A is up here. So then what if we just do one of these? Flush this out. So if we get all of these, so we've got the D down here, uh, a C up here. So let's do A. So then we've got this E. Let's get rid of the G. We'll leave the G here. And the G comes up there, so we'll add the B here. And again, all I'm doing is I'm paying attention to my bass line. I'm seeing what note is in my bass line, what note is in my melody, and I'm trying to pick chordal tones to fill out the rest. So here we have the full E minor chord. Down here, we still have the full E minor chord. That's all I'm doing. I'm saying, all right, here's my bass line. Here's my melody, A and D. Um, and then at moments like this, where the melody, melody note is not from the underlying chord, I'm just trying to keep nice open statements because G, B, and A is going to sound much more crunchy than G, B, D, and A. So we will do... Raise this... And then G sharp, E, so let's leave the B there. And 
then we'll do the B and E again. So then we've got the basics fleshed out a bit. Let's now add a bit more rhythm to our counter melody. Awesome, so let's add a bit of rhythm, but first couple more qu comments. Awesome. Um, uh, Debrush Day, you do it, man. I am here until the end. Thank you. That's awesome. Awesome. That is, thank you. That helps a lot with the stats for the stream, too. What The longer people stay here. So, like, this little thing right here. You see, average, oh, average view duration. The longer this is, the better it is from YouTube. YouTube will think, oh, this is awesome. People are staying. So let's see, Shipton Car Roy. By the way, personal question, but how did you come up with the name Tabletop Composer? Ooh, awesome. Good question, actually, because we are technically celebrating five years of the channel. So the name Tabletop Composer came from very early on. So I I was very arrogant. I, I uh, There was a composer called uh, uh, Rimsky Korsakov, I believe. A uh, very famous Russian composer who was a self taught musician. And very early in his career, had just kind of made a career for himself, just kind of like fumbling around and making music. And so he got offered a teaching position at a very prestigious university. And uh, he said if he had been any older and any less arrogant, he would have realized he never should have taken that position. Uh, because he got there and realized he had no idea how to teach music. So his whole career was just teaching himself enough to stay one lesson ahead of the students until he became so good at it that he has actually probably had more influence uh, on modern day music than any other music teacher in recent history in terms of just the sheer number of his students who went on to do massive amazing things so i relate to that because i started this channel at the same time i decided i wanted to be a composer with like zero experience and i started it because my buddy who uh still dear friend he actually the, the antonio the one who does the podcasts with me he he said hey we should start a youtube channel where we just write music for our D, &D campaigns he's like we won't worry about trying to get big or anything. We're just going to share the music that we write for our campaigns. And we'll just, it'll be a cool like outlet for the music. And so I'm like, awesome, I'll do that. Yeah, so I put together the channel. I called it Tabletop Composer because it was just, we were composers and we were going to make music for our tabletop D&D games. And then the channel just morphed very rapidly where I realized I wanted to get better at this. And one of the best ways that I could learn and internalize information was, was by teaching it. Because at the time, at the time I was working at the University of Michigan teaching a psych course, and I found out that the material that I taught was the stuff that stuck in my head the longest. Um, so I just started putting out lessons and tutorials, and over time it went from me teaching stuff as a way to kind of remember it to me genuinely having a good understanding of the stuff and genuinely enjoying being a teacher and sharing all the information. <laughs> So five years later, I'm now a professional composer. I have taught students from six of the seven continents. I've worked with people from all over the world, and I love what I do. So yeah, awesome. A little bit of a celebration of all that has happened in these past five years. Jack, I'm like an hour and a bit late, but I am attempting to do this alongside with you. No worries, yeah, go for it. Speaking of which, if you would also like to do this, Again, this whole worksheet, this five-step process, it breaks down what is this step all about, what do you need to figure out for each step, what are some videos on my channel that you can watch to help teach you more about doing this, and then what was the very specific process I had planned for this stream to help make sure I did it. You can get all of this for like $4 on my website. Uh, of course, you don't need to buy this. All right, You do not need to buy anything on my website. Uh, but it helps support me. It helps support the work that I do. And if you would just like to have access to this document yourself and follow it along your own and your own, it's very, there you go. It, it, it's helpful for like four bucks. Uh, along with all the other cool stuff for sale. Alex, next anniversary, we're going to play some D and D and stream. And Steven is the game master. Who's in that? That would be kind of fun. I have no idea how that would be possible. Um, 
But yeah, if you guys have ideas for like anniversary, that would be, that would require a lot of thought, a lot of effort. I'm sure there'd be a way to do it though. That does that sounds like fun. Good idea, Alex. Um, Alex, I'm also here from the beginning to the end, but since I'm from Germany, I sadly have to do other stuff on the side. Just so I'm more passive today. No worries, no worries. I thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, like I said, honestly, I. I gotta say, I was more nervous about this stream than I have ever been about a stream. And that's not true. My first, the first couple times that I ever streamed, I was super nervous because I'd never done anything like this. Uh, now it's kind of second nature, but I was nervous. Like I've got, I got like a bag of energy drinks that I got before this because severe ADHD. The caffeine helps me focus. Oddly enough, I I get energized, but it helps me zone in. So nothing crazy. These are only like 70 milligrams of caffeine. So like four of them is like a pre-workout level kind of thing. But I got it because I have no idea how long it's going to last and I wanted to stay focused. Um, I I did actually struggle to sleep last night for a bunch of reasons. Because, I mean, I was up super late for a table reading of the play I'm scoring. And so uh, that's going to – I'll be in New York in the first weekend of May for the debut of the play. So if anyone's in New York, hit, hit me up. I'd love to hang out. Uh, meet you guys. Uh, but I'll be in New York for a full week for the debut of my play that I'm working on. And so we had a table reading the other day, and so that was fun. So that was that kind of like energized me before I went to bed. But prepping, like just the nerves of having to do all of this live. But it's going pretty well. I'm enjoying it, I think. Um, Carl Magnuson. Hi, all. Just want to say hi. Lurking and working, listening in the background for gold particles. Thank you. Awesome. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for saying hi. Uh, Alex, you are doing great, man. Thank you for all your efforts. Thank you. I really appreciate that. I really do. Uh, so thank you, Alex. Um, uh, Shipshika Roy, is uh, is he your favorite composer? I have only heard this flight of the Bumblebee for, of him. Um, I'm not sure which composer you're talking about, Shipshika. Was that from your comment earlier? It looks like you have a message that was retracted. But uh, yeah, I'm not sure. My favorite composers... It changes day to day. I'd say the ones that have had the biggest impact on me are Tom Holkenberg, Hans Zimmer, and Joe Hisaishi. Um, or are you talking about Rimsky Korsakov? Rimsky Korsakov, did he do Flight of the Bumblebee? I didn't know that. Uh, Rimsky Korsakov, I got a lot of old classical composers that I love because of their stories. All right, so I've said it multiple times. I am a musician because my first love is storytelling, and I just personally think music is one of the best ways to tell stories. So my first love is storytelling. Music is my method of sharing stories. And so naturally, I love history, and I love studying the story of composers. And so I relate a lot to Rimsky-Korsakov because he, I think, like, he had zero business being a musician. And yet somehow, just because of the pure passion of it and because of his own arrogance and believing he could do something that he probably had no business thinking he could do, he made a career for himself. And I... I I do see myself a lot with that. I remember when I was first starting out, this was a very dramatic career change. I was supposed, I was supposed to continue my education with a dual PhD program. I had already been told the spot was mine. I was going to get a PhD in both, uh, social psychology and social work. Um, the president, like the director of the board of the program had been my mentor. I was supposed to move on to that. I was going to be the first doctor in the family. And then, boom, out of the blue, I'm kind of like, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to try and be a musician instead. So, obviously, my parents were thrilled. Uh, they're completely on board now. They're completely on board now. They're very supportive. But, of course, there were lots of discussions. And I remember one conversation with my mom where she was just very worried. And she's like, how do you know that you're not just being arrogant, thinking you could do this? Because I have had a lot of success in my life in terms of, like, when I put my mind to something – I'm able to do it. It can be a struggle. It can be very hard. But what I am very good at follow up. I'm very good at follow through and making sure that my visions and my plans, no matter what the obstacles are, I'm able to push forward and make sure I accomplish it. So my mom was worried. And she said, like, what, how do you know this isn't you just being arrogant? And I told her, of course it is. I'm being very arrogant thinking I can do this. But you have to be arrogant because arrogance is just confidence without knowing you can actually do it. Confidence is the knowledge you can do something because you've done it before. Arrogance is the belief you can do something you can't do. Uh, there is negative arrogance where you just want to push people around you down so that you can stay above. But then there is a the positive arrogance where you believe you can pull yourself further to a spot that you don't have. 
And so that's what I've been working on, and that's what I see a lot of myself in with Rimsky-Korsakov, in being someone who had no business being a music teacher, but was able to have a big influence and be able to do what he loved and to actually contribute to music. So I like to think that someday, if I haven't already, that I will have contributed to someone amazing, someone great, someone who who loves music. All of you are amazing. All of you are great. And that's, that's, that's so, uh, like, just the idea that I could contribute to someone's journey is just amazing. And I love, I love what I do. I, I don't know where I'm going with this, but yeah. So I would say I do, he's one of my favorite composers from a story standpoint. Um, let's see here. Um, a person, your channel has been absolutely awesome to watch. I was interested in composing for a while and had the same thought of tabletop RPG and music composing equals composing practice. Awesome resources. So happy for five years. Thank you. It's a really fun idea, isn't it? Writing music for a game that you're playing with your friends. It really is. That's what got me started. Um, I don't do it as much anymore just because since COVID happened, we, I haven't been able to play D and D all that much. But right now I'm working on getting a campaign together with a lot of my cousins and friends. So I'm excited for that one. Um, Jack Ludwig, you're going to be still awake at 4 a.m. making chocolate pudding. Oh, talking about the caffeine? Nah. I have, so I'm a strength athlete. I am, a, I, I am not very athletic, but I am strong. And I love going to the gym. So I have a very, very crazy high caffeine tolerance. Um... I can, I can drink, I can drink, okay, so the best I can do, I, I do, I have a very good understanding of my limits. I can drink up to 300 milligrams of caffeine in a single drink, and as long as it's before 5 p.m., I'm sleeping like a baby, all right? So this, four of these together, that's less than 300 milligrams, and I'm definitely having all of them before 5 p.m., I'm good, all right? Nothing, like, I, I'm gonna be fine, I'll be good. But, uh, especially because it's still, it's, oh man, it's not morning here anymore. It's 1 p, it's 1 p.m. I've been doing this for two hours, all right? But looks like I'm all caught up on the chat, so let's continue, shall we? So this piece. So the last step is to add a little bit of rhythm. I don't want to add too much rhythm here. Let's just add a little bit of... Kind of stepwise moment. So, if you'll notice, what I'm doing right now is I'm just trying to add a little bit of movement to my counter melody here. I focus on finding the chordal tones I wanted to use first, and now I'm adding rhythm, following the same pattern of have an idea, sentence structure repeat that same basic idea now i'm creating a new idea and all i'm doing is to decide on where i add the rhythm i'm looking for moments where my melody is resting so here it's resting so i'm moving and anytime i add a new tone i'm just making sure it doesn't clash with another one so these two right here they're being played at the same time but they're not dissonant if i had tried say an f that would be a bit trickier but anytime two notes are articulated, meaning they start at the same time, they should form a consonant interval with each other, meaning they should sound pleasant together. Let's do... Let's listen to this. In fact, I'm going to leave that one alone. And then I want to hear this part back here again. I'm not sure I like how fast this moves. So what if I did... 
if I move this back. Nah, I'll just leave it the way it was. So let's listen to it from the beginning. Remember, paying attention to my map that I drew out. Step one, the very first phrase, I wanted to be very small and intimate. I wanted to be super simple. So I was thinking just a solo melody with maybe a bass line and a central harmony. Then in the second, I wanted it to start getting bitter, bigger. Start adding some more confidential material to make it a bit more rhythmically active without pulling too much attention to the melody. So originally I was thinking melody plus rhythmic chords, but instead I ended up doing melody plus counter melody. And I, the main idea is I wanted to start getting more complex so that we could have somewhere to move. So here it gets bigger, but then it needs to come back down. So maybe I will add a bit more movement here. Well, I'm liking the idea of maybe a rhythmic bass line. Let's try this. So we'll have it building in velocity. We can test this. If I don't like it, I'll just change it. I need more movement. I need more movement. But how am I going to do this? What do you guys think? How could I add a bit more movement here? I don't want it to be purely rhythmic in terms of like percussion. Or maybe it could be percussion. Maybe it could be like a vibraphone playing a pedal point. Let's try that actually. So what if we just did started and we what if we no not 16th notes I don't want that much movement maybe 8th notes what if we drop this so it's a very subtle I think that might work. I don't like the rhythm. So what if we did triplet eighth notes? Raise it a little bit. this This is 
this isn't for the beginning. Let's see, what ideas did you guys come up with? All right, so Pierre Ber Ber Bergen. I like the lack of movement there. So you, so you like the lack of movement? <sighs> Maybe I'll leave it. Maybe I'll leave it. Let's let's try it again. Let's listen to the whole thing. Because I want I, the main thing is I want there to be a little more complexity, a little more movement, so that when we come back down to very little movement in the third phrase, it has a little bit more contrast. I'm not sure I like that anymore. Um, I think the main idea is I just need to... Uh, let's try adding some movement here. time. All right, so I think that might do it. Let's listen to it one more time and then move on. this one and good i think that's good yep i agree with you pierre i think that's probably a good enough movement especially once i added more movement at the end it helped quite a bit so now b1 the next phrase we need to get larger which is probably just going to be i'm going to have the french horn enter i think uh complexity movement should come back down so text i'm thinking melody and essential harmony and bass line so this should be simple enough. A 
let's listen to this melody real quick. So I'm thinking actually what we'll do is we will double the bass line. Well, first let's figure out what the bass line is going to be. So this one, this gap is pretty large. So I'm going to leap up to the fifth first to add a bit more movement. Make sure that that's... So I don't like the idea of having them both be on E right at the same time. So we'll just do that. All right, so awesome. So we've got that taken care of. Let's mute the chords. We will take the melody, the bass line, we will double it. So then let's get the bass line and notes out. Let's delete those. And then we can just flesh out the harmony a bit more. Well, first. In fact, instead of doing perfect octaves, what if I did the fifth? E. F and C, then E down to B, then G down to D, F down to C. So then, let's see here. So we've got the bass line, good. Let's flesh out this harmony, harmony a little bit more. So we'll delete the G. D, F, A, A, E. G, B. So let's raise this an octave. Then we've got the bass line is nice and thick. We've got a little bit of harmony. Let's bring these up actually a little octave. No, that's right, because then the melody starts on that. So let's, actually, let's just get rid of that. And this might just be all we need. Um, let's drop this down to a C. What are we doing here? What are we doing here? Um, ha, ha, ha. Let's see. E, G. 
So we want something bigger. So the melody being in the French horn will probably give it a nice strong support. create a slight difference. This might be good enough. It doesn't need to be that complex. So then this section gets repeated. Let's see what the map has to say about what we're going to do. Get larger. Doubling should feel like a clip focus. So, oh yeah, so we get bigger. Start getting a bit more active again. Melody, rhythmic accompaniment, and bass line. I like this idea. What if we just added kind of like an arpeggio? Try this. So we did eighth quarter notes. So let's try one second, let me see here. So yeah, what if we tried to do something like that? All right, so. So we try triple it, triple it. How do I unmute this? There we go. Nope. There we go. D minor. It was uh, D minor, so we'll go to F and A. let's just do, keep C. So instead of a D minor, we have D minor seven creates a much more romantic sound. Then we need another A minor. So what we'll do is we'll just copy this. We'll keep that C as kind of like a pedal tone. Then it was an F major. In fact, let's drop all of these an octave, shall we, so we're not overlapping. No, they're still overlapping a little bit. I'd rather overlap with the melody a bit than the bass line. Um, let's see here. Yes, I let's see. Yeah, I like adding the arpeggio as well. Let's see. Thank you, Pierre. Let's see here. Then I think with the E minor, we can finally break away from that pedal point C. So it goes. Okay. 
So let's actually move up. We got G major. And then we've got an F major over here. So let's just copy from over here. And then it's a simple matter of changing this to a minor A. So let's listen to this again. It's gonna sound uninspired because it's all just MIDI. All right, so all this is nice, but I think since we've got the nice repetitive arpeggio, we can be a little more adventurous with our bass line. Let's try. Let's listen to it. All right, so apparently not. No, I kind of like the bass line the way it is now. We'll leave it that way. Uh, let's listen to the full sketch, shall we? So far. All right, so there we go. So that's pretty decent for the first half. Um, and again, something I want to point out is the transitions aren't decided yet. So for example, here going from an E major to C major um, isn't the strongest transition. Going from here to here isn't the strongest transition. We're not too worried about that just yet. 
my primary focus is getting the basic fundamental layers for each section figured out, and then we'll smooth it all out when we actually start orchestrating it. So, back to size to A3. We want the size to come back down. Complexity, much more complex, much more movement. So here I'm thinking melody, ostinato, counter melody, and bass line. So what we will do is essentially, so let's double check. Is this just the same? We didn't change anything? All right, awesome. So what we're going to do is I think we're going to go back to A2. We're going to highlight all of this. I'm going to copy and paste it into here. And then we're going to focus on finding a way to make this sound more complex. So what if this, what if this is an opportunity? What's, what's that? What if this is the opportunity for kind of that triplet pulse I was thinking earlier? Large part. Um, what if we try doing kind of a triplet feel in the bass line? Let's add a bit more color to this velocity wise, a little more shape. Kind of like a fading out pulse. Something that breathes a bit more. Kind of like that. And then we could double this bass line an octave lower and have a slower pulse. We'll do that in a moment. All right, how long have we been doing this? This is like one thirty. So this is a two and a half hour stream. So this is already taking the cake as the longest stream I have done so far. And we haven't even started orchestrating this. We've started arranging it, but we haven't orchestrated it yet. So let's see here. What if... Because I'm feeling like the idea of doing some pizzicato basses. Oops. All right, here we go. I like click. I like click. I like click. I like click. Yep, da 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 da. Let's do half notes. See how this sounds. Those triplets are very fatiguing, aren't they? It sounds good at the beginning, but then I feel like they stay too stationary. just here this is where it starts to feel off to me so why is that um we've got a g major with an a in the top so what if i just drop this down 
What if I go down instead of up? I think that's good for now. Again, if I don't like it when I'm orchestrating it, I'll change it. But the main idea is just to get a simple structure. So we're past the halfway point now for this. So let's just keep moving along, chugging and plugging. Uh, the next phrase, start building slowly in size. And this is where we want the most complex texture of the piece. Uh, full on counterpoint. All right, so let's just copy and paste this texture. into here and we'll just add another layer um so let's i feel like i'm missing an a drop that down a bit so let's drop this down to thirds or to fits. And you know what? Actually, let's just delete the triplets for now. We can add them back in later. Maybe like an octave higher or something. Right now, I just want. What if we added a layer on top? So we're going to add the same way that we did the others. So A, C, E on beat one, that's A minor. Over here we have, let's try doing C here. Let's drop this down a bit. Is there a way, does anybody know if there's a way to color? the notes because I know over here I can do like part is there because I know that no it doesn't look like there's a coloring thing I'll just have to separate them layer later and then we do a minor and then we do E A C D so That's a bit crunchy there. So that's technically a D major, a D minor, a D major, a D major dominant seven. So C to F sharp, that's a tritone. Uh oh. Is it buffering? Hopefully, it's not buffering. Uh-oh. It says, error. YouTube is not receiving enough video to maintain smooth streaming. As such, few viewers will experience buffering. <sighs> Lo siento mucho, everybody. I'm very sorry. I don't know. I'm the only one home right now. I'm the only one on the internet. And we don't have terrible internet. Okay, so a little bit of lag. All right, so well, hopefully it's better now. All right, so let's see here. This is E minor. There we go. Let's drop this down a bit. Uh, 
Oh, thank you, Pierre. Yeah, I know there's different ways to color it. So I can do pitch so it's based off pitch, but I'm looking to change it based off part, which is technically done by track. So part is technically by track, I believe. Um, Voice, maybe? Is it done by voice? I don't know. Part? Or maybe it is part. Maybe voice is the line part. Uh, whatever. We'll figure it out. But let's, for now, this is my new contrapuntal line. Let's start adding some rhythm to it. So I think the first thing I can do right there is add a bit move, step or down, downward movement. see here so that's what I think I think I'll add a little bit more rhythmic identity over here See, there's got to be a way to add more movement here. So the da, 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 da. Now let's add those triplets back in, which I didn't really need to remove, I guess. Because I ended up going above the melody, then instead of below it. Let's see here. Let's put it all together. good and then so the next section so we go from an E major to C major again so did we change yeah I think we changed this this last chord is supposed to be a G major G major Let's bring this down. I think it was supposed to change sooner than that. So there's the last measure. There we 
we go. That has a bit more pull to it. Let's see here. Um, Pierre, seems if you choose part, it basically changes to the same color as the section has in the arranger view. I am not sure that is helpful enough, though. Um, so the arranger view. What is the arranger view? I'm always learning something new. Oh, you mean like out here? So like, cause I know if I change this to like, say green and then I open the MIDI again, I go to part. Yeah. It just goes to the green. It just shows that. Uh, but what is voice then? What does voice do? Aha. I think this is it. So then is there a way to assign a voice? Is there a way to assign a voice? I don't know. That would be really helpful to know. Assign a voice. I'm not seeing it. I'm not going to worry about it just yet. If someone knows how to do that, let me know. I'm always interested in learning something new. Um, Pierre Bergen is up there. Seems if you choose part, it's basically a voice is saying, what I say? Paul, uh, magic to my ears. Harper says, hi. Hey there, that's my cousin, Paul. How's it going, Paul? Good to see you, man. Yeah, thanks for stopping by. Um, glad, glad the new daughter is enjoying the music. Uh, at this point, it's just piano music. All right, at this point, it's just, um, very kind of weird it just it's 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 non-musical piano p computer playing but it's going to get way better very soon so c2 we're going to climax largest so we're going to do lots of brass simple texture after a much more complex one modulation is the key change we're doing that loudest dynamics many octaves so thinking lots of brackets lots of size complexity simplify ah so chordal this will be fun so the chordal the idea of a chordal texture is we are going to start by just copying the rhythm of our melody above. We'll go da da da. So then the next thing we're going to take this top line and we're going to simply stick to only chordal tones. Uh, let's go. So the bass line is G, so let's do it. We'll do, so this is a C major, so we're sticking to C major. We'll go to, and then it's a D minor. Then we'll, we'll remember we want to make sure that anytime two notes are played and are articulated at the same time, they form a constant interval. So we have a choice between we'll just do F. And A. So we've got A minor. Let's go to We'll go to E. And we'll leave it at E there. So we've got let's mute these real quick. So let's do, actually I like the idea of sticking to just G for these three since G uh, harmonizes with each of those. Uh, and then we need a, let's go down to D. And then we'll go, we'll go back to the same thing we did earlier. D. And then B, we can do, again, G would work for both of these. So we'll just stick with G to add a little bit of separation. And then let's do G and then D. So we've got a nice strong chordal texture, meaning again it follows the same exact uh follows the same exact 
uh, rhythm, I'm going to double this melody an octave lower to kind of sandwich the two. And so now we're going to have a nice strong... Drop this an active. We'll drop the bass line an octave lower. And yeah, we'll just kind of play around the sides a little bit. So then we've got that. There we go. Now you can feel the weight. Wants me to play Freebird? No, I come from a big. So yeah, Paul. Paul's my cousin. We both come from a family of lots of guitar players. And no, 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 no. Um, Damashi, it looks like I missed the whole stream. No, not really. This is just the first half. <laughs> this is gonna be a very long stream. Um, but welcome, Tamashi. Welcome, Jack. The first couple bars sound like a variation on the happy example. So the emotions guys. Oh, does it? That's awesome. So yeah, Jack is one of my students. He took the former Emotions and Music class. So if you see Tabletop Composer, you'll see that I have a tab for Emotions and Music class. Unfortunately, it's currently no longer active. Uh, my schedule has gotten too full. I'm working on two soundtracks. I'm putting a class together for the Indie Film Music Contest. I'm doing a bunch of stuff. So I just don't have time to teach. Um, it might come back in the future. I still do private lessons, but they, for this one, it was mostly all of the written feedback that I would do for all the assignments. If you want, you can learn more about this class. There's lots of examples. And if you are interested, the class is available as a book. I have all of the videos, all of the uh, articles, everything included in the class other than me, myself, doing live lectures and graded feedback. Um, it is currently on sale for like $9 off because it's 15% off. Oh. PayPal allows you to do four interest-free payments. Very interesting. Did not know that. Uh, you don't have to use PayPal. PayPal is not the only payment option. But go ahead, check that out. Um, I'm very proud of that book. So, uh, Pierre, I found out how to assign voice to notes, but it looks a bit weird to me. Here is how. Through select project. Ooh, nice. So let's figure this out. Through the project, go to chord track, project, chord track assign voices to notes interesting um so would i just like go through here highlight this project chord track assign voices to notes and then go to voice huh that is a little weird you yeah you would think that there's a way to actually chord track assign voices to notes so what if So what if I just did one line at a time? Uh, chord track, assign voices to notes. Nope, that's not how that works. All right, whatever. This is weird. I'll have to explore it because now that I know I can do something like that, that sounds like fun. So then the next structure that we were saying is going to get simplified a bit, but the bass line and chords, uh, so the size will come back down and the structure is going to be something a bit more subtle so let's get rid of basically the bass line from here is what i'm thinking let's get rid of that let's voice lead this a little bit more uh, 
Now we can leave this the way it is. Right, so awesome we've got that i think that's basically enough um the climactic textures are surprisingly very very simple you can add percussion and stuff but you don't need a lot of movement um so yeah we said melody plus chorus plus baseline so we're good uh the very last one um yeah so we were thinking about maybe coming back down to just the original kind of texture right maybe a little more complex so let's try copying and pasting this and let's see here so let's find a way to end this so let's do let's just end this down on a minor so we'll do and then let's just do let's end this with C and A so then we come back down to a very simple texture so now we have our full sketch figured out let's listen to the whole thing we have it nice sketch out we have all of our most important layers figured out so then the final step is to finally orchestrate all of this oh let's see oh let's see tamashi can you walk me through which parts i have missed um yeah i'll do a very quick one so we started out you can buy this worksheet for like four bucks on my website uh, started out by figuring out the structure. It's five minutes long, so I need it. So I decided to go uh, with an A, B, A, C structure, and then an A. So like rondo form, 60 beats per minute. That'll give us about five minutes plus the intro. Um, then I found out from there I needed three different themes. So I just went through, wrote three different themes. I copied and pasted them into the sections I needed them. And then I mapped everything out. I started out by deciding where was my structure, where was my comp, uh, where which section was going to be my... Uh, oops, which section was going to be my climax, which I decided was here. And then everywhere else I mapped basically how does this size, does it get bigger? Does this section need to be more or less complex? And then just an idea of what layers I wanted. And so I went through and I adjusted my piano sketch of my melodies to make sure that it reflected that kind of growth. So I have been streaming for three hours now. This is definitely the longest stream I've ever done. Uh, welcome back, Shipshunker. So what we are going to do right now is I am going to take a very quick break to stretch my legs. Uh, I will leave this on here playing. And by the time the five minutes are up and the music is done, I will be back. So let's see here. Five minute break. We'll return soon and orchestrate our sketch all right so i'm gonna put that there just so y'all don't think i'm gone let you hit play test
this is not done yet. We're basically at the halfway point. We've sketched the piano, and now the last remaining step is to orchestrate everything. Let's change something real quick, just because we are so, so very close to five minutes. So let's go back to this last bit, paste it, and instead of cutting it short, just let's raise this up an octave There we go. Was a two measures short. All right, awesome. So here we go. We've got our sketch. Last step is to orchestrate it. Now to orchestrate the music, I like to go out of a DAW because again, if I load a bunch of string libraries or open my DAW template, I get too focused on, oh, I want the strings to sound exactly how I want the strings to sound. Whereas in notation, I don't have to worry about it. So I just, what I am going to do is I am going to start duplicating these tracks and I will name this first one melody and I'm going to go through all of these and just delete everything that is not the melody so there we go and you will see what because this way as I export each track as a MIDI track and I open it up in uh, finale it'll make things much easier And this is probably something I should have done earlier. I, I, it probably would have been better to write this stuff just as in each individual track. But I tend to get lazy. And then I suffer for it. Past tabletop composer is lazy. And then future slash present tabletop suffers for it. It's all right. I refuse to learn my lesson. 
let's see here. Get rid of the arpeggio. Get rid of the bass line. And then we've got, again, get rid of everything that's not the melody. Which includes the bass line, includes the counter melodies, includes all of that stuff. All right, so then this next section, again, got to delete everything that's not the main melody. So this is going to be a bit of a tedious moment. It's going to take a little bit of effort and a little bit of time. So in the meantime, what's everybody up to? Uh, any questions? Any comments? What are you, I'm curious. What are your guys' – which video brought everybody to this channel? I have over 260 tutorials posted on this channel over the course of five years that we are celebrating today so i'm curious what is uh yeah like what brings people here like which videos were the ones that brought you guys to my channel and i understand there's a lag between the stream and what i'm talking so i'll be patient and wait for some responses I'm going to say probably most of you, most of you, if I had to predict it, I would say most of you are probably here from my very first video, which I made when I had no idea what I was talking about, but has still helped a lot of people. It's my Ghibli chord videos or Ghibli chords, however you want to pronounce it. Or more recently, my video on the DNA of all music is another one that's brought a lot of people over. So let's see here. Nice tremolos, nice for me. It's the instrument doubling video. Instrument doubling video, interesting. I'm pretty sure into this job, but I can't remember how I got here. No worries, no worries. All right, so we've got the melody taken care of. Got the melody figured out. Now let's double again. And this time, make a bass line. Shrek. We're going to delete everything that is not the baseline. Melody, counter melody. Well, there's got to be a better way to do this. I'm sure there is. In fact, come to think of it, it probably would have been better to just kind of highlight everything and just copy and paste. But it's all right. Everything but the baseline. Arpeggios. Just the bass line. Actually, these triplets are part of the bass line, so I'll leave those. Uh, yeah, so this is part of the glamorous part of composing, is when you're doing some of the tedious work. Um, this is why it would be wonderful to have a composer's assistant. I could just say, hey, I'm going to go grab lunch. Uh, you stay here and you do all the tedious work. Can I grab you something? Something like that. I don't know. At this point, I'm just talking to myself. Uh, let's see here. Da, 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 da. That almost... At least I separated most of the layers by velocity which makes it easier to identify them. And then... So now I got the baseline one, and then the last one will be mid-ground. So this is anything that's not the bass line and not the melody. So let's do this. So melody is out. 
Bass line is out. And then after we've got everything for, uh, everything removed, except for just the mid on the counter melodies and stuff like that, uh, I will go through, I will quantize all of these layers to make sure that we have everything nice and notation friendly. Then we'll export everything as a MIDI file. So melody and bass line. So this one, everything gets deleted. Or does it? Did I keep the bass line in twos for this one? Let's see here. Yep, I kept the bass line in twos for this one. So everything in this section gets deleted. This one, let's see here. Any questions, any comments? I'm getting bored. I'm boring myself here. Um, Jack, I think the first video that I saw was the one everyone sees, how to write chords like Studio Ghibli. But then I saw the Harmony playlist and that was it. Awesome. That's great. I love to hear that people found me from the Harmony playlist and the Melody playlist. Uh, those, I think, are some of the videos that I'm most proud of. Uh, because that was, I've got lots of videos that I'm proud of, but I think those are the ones that I was the, I am still very, very proud of because I feel like they share a lot of information that doesn't get shared very frequently. Uh, you can find lots of people who are like, Oh, top five chord progressions that are very helpful. Here's a MIDI pack that you can use that will create chord progressions for you. And no one really talks about how, Hey, chord progressions aren't that hard. It's literally just forming patterns. And here are some useful patterns that you can use to create your own chord progressions. Uh, let's see here. So, I am sure there are people out there who have much more uh, efficient workflows, and I'm driving them crazy, but that's all right. Everybody is different. I've got my caffeine. I've got my computer. Um, got everything I need. Let's see here. Got my counter melodies figured out. Oops. So close. We are getting so close. Let's see here. Um, needs arpeggios, needs momentum. Oh, uh, let's see here. I have watched all of your videos, so I just forgot which one I watched first, Deborah J. Uh, I like to hear that too. I like to hear that there that people have seen a lot of my videos. And if you've been around long enough that you can't remember how you found me, that's cool too. So Tamashi needs arpeggios, needs momentum. Which part do you think needs momentum? So specifically, one thing I will point out is as you start uh, practice, because I mean, I, I'm always open to feedback. I really am. And I appreciate the feedback. But one thing I would caution you against is dis making decisions about momentum and size from a piano sketch. Because a single melody of... On piano sounds very different from that being played across four octaves and strings. And in that case, the momentum feels way greater. So, and that's something that comes with practice and some with experience. I have been working with um, piano sketches for the vast majority of my professional career. I've experimented with all kinds of approaches, but this tends to be what, uh, so I've got a fair decent idea of what this should sound like when it's arranged. I think it's pretty good at the moment, but definitely if I feel like it needs more momentum, needs more ideas, uh, arpeggios and stuff like that, then I will definitely adjust that when the time comes, uh, for orchestrating. So let's find out. Let's first, let's see here. 
the melody one. I don't know why I glued all those. This one, I believe, needs quite a bit of quantizing. So then we'll do and these. We'll get the triplets. And then the rest of these we'll get. So what quantizing does is quantizing says, hey, what's the grid set to? Eighth notes. Awesome. Eighth notes. We're going to, when I hit quantize, it will snap everything to the nearest eighth note value. When I say quantize ends, it snaps everything to the nearest eighth note end value. So just go through here, clear everything up. We'll do the same thing here. Find the triplets first. We'll say, let's go to the triplet thing. Watch this. Snap everything. Snap the ends. This one got a bit long. But then I'll highlight everything else. Go to quantize. Oops. Not to eighth notes. I want to eight triplets. There we go. And then I think that's the end of it that needs to be quantized. We can double check by going scores, open score editor. And if anything looks really weird, why is nothing showing up? Let's go here. Ah, I was on the wrong one. All right, so looking for weird looking rhythms. 33, measure 33 is looking weird. 33, so ah, that's because this is the same one that we've just been doing. So I'm going to just delete this one, bring it in from over here. Same here. And then the last one we need, I'll just quantize this one because this one ends slightly differently. So eighth note triplets, quantize, quantize ends. So there we go. Let's double check everything with the score again. And again, this is I'm looking at this because I am going to be Where why is it? Ah, here we go. I don't use the score editor very frequently, so either way, the first half looks good. Let's check this one out. Does everything look good? Yeah, things look fine here. Uh-oh, 37. What's going on here? Um, so we'll just go through and quantize everything. So about 37 is where things got a bit crazy rhythmically. So let's just get all of these quantized. Aha, so that's what was going on. Again, quantize, quantize ends. Let's open this up. This looks better. Uh, 44. What's going on at 44? 44 and 45. Uh, oh, it's because I got to do the same thing. Let's see here. Quantize. Quantize ends. We'll get rid of this. So then let's get the scores open again. 546 is looking a bit weird. So then we'll do... 45 and 46. Why is what's wrong with 46? So then maybe it's up here. We'll do eighth note triplets. Let's check the scores. 45s looks like there we go. Yep. A little overlap. that let's get it over here too and so this is why all this stuff is important because if i were to import if i were to export all this as midi data your computer will notice literally everything and it will try it will try to portray it uh we have music notation which can get very very confusing very very quickly uh let's just see this real quick i think that should be it 
Yep, looks about good. Um, so then the last one would be the midground. Let's check this. This one should also be fine, I'm pretty sure. Because these were also entered with the... Okay, so 39. 39, so let's... So first, let's get all of this quantized. There we go. It shows its face. So first, I so the first quantize, I tell everything to snap it to the nearest bar. And then the second one says to make sure each of them are equal length. Quantize ends. Which is how I notice tiny little things like this otherwise may have gone unnoticed wait why is this here oh it's because i'm in the wrong one all right that's why all right let's do eighth notes there we go and i'm gonna say that's probably good We'll leave it for now. Anything else I can take care of myself. Let's disable. No, let's not disable anything. Let's export everything as a MIDI file. This is not for. Let's do. Where is it? Um, where is my external drive? Ah, here we are. Cubase projects, YouTube tutorials live streams uh five-year anniversary stream and yeah sketch export and i just realized i had not saved any of this that would have been disastrous um five-year anniversary stream so awesome so let's see uh, what well, we get some more people over here um, my cousin's telling me to check my phone. <laughs> uh, he sent a baby picture. I'm not going to share it. Uh, she's adorable, dude. She's beautiful. All right. His, his young daughter that he's a new father. So congratulations, Paul. All right. So let's see here. Ship Shankar. But later on that video on overtones and orchestration where you explained 1537 got me, uh, got me to look at the other videos and the live feedback really hooked me here. Oh, awesome. Cool. So talk about how you got back in the channel too um let's see so tom, uh then tamashi what is the main problem you would say in your life that you are dealing with right now like the current problem of your life i'm not sure life's pretty good i mean you could always have more money right <laughs> more money more resources less student debt but i'm not really the kind of person who focuses on my problems i prefer to focus on the things that are going well and things are going well. I've got a new sound chat coming out. I'm going to be doing a lot of traveling this spring for work and for just kind of fun with my family. Things are going pretty good. So now I am in finale. I am going to offer a new template. A new template. There we go. I'm going to go to orchestral templates. I'm going to go to... Uh, Studio Orchestra is the one I like to work with. Uh, five year anniversary anniversary video. Um, composed live. We will say Stephen Berkemeyer. Tabletop composer. Um, copyright tw twenty twenty four. And this is in 4-4 time. We will say A minor. We'll start with the minor key. Um, hide key signature to show all accent. I'm just going to do that. How many measures was this? This piece was about 75 measures. We'll say 75. Um, 75 measures. Tempo is 60. And we'll finish. I'm going to go into the scroll view because that's what I prefer. And then I'm going to open 
Now I'm going to import. Oh, no, no, one second. File new. I'm going to do a import. It's supposed to be MIDI. All right, I see. All right. How do I import MIDI? Or no, no, I've got it backwards. I'm supposed to export MIDI from Finale and import a MIDI FX, a uh, MXL. Export uh, music at MXL. Let's go to scores, open score editor. And then we'll do the baseline. Let's do a bass clef. Um, let's do here. How do I change this again? I'm showing my. Oh, we'll just do auto clef. All right, awesome. Um, and we'll just export it like this. Export music mx XML. Years anniversary. And this is where we will import it. From the downloads, select. All right, so here, where's the main problem? Oh, so that's why my orchestration suck. Um, uh, let's see. I'm not sure why you're saying it sucks, but uh, your orchestration sucks. But if you learn something, that's good. I compose with a pencil, paper, and instrument, so it's more tedious than it. Yes, I, yeah. You are a very much more patient composer than I am. So let's see here. Score manager for this one. Let's name this one Melody. This one is Baseline. And this one is mid ground all right so we've got our sketch from cubase in this file we've got our orchestra in here all right so let's zoom out a bit there we go so we've got all these instruments we can choose from uh percussion harp piano choir violins contrabass so now the question is we need to go section by section and decide which instrument we want to go with. So I like to start with just doing the melody for each section. All right, so let's look at the melody, uh, our size. So we need something very small, very intimate. You guys were saying that you thought the flute, like a recorder, would be really cool to play the first melody, right? So what if we tried putting it in the flute? Uh, so that was the first, what, eight measures? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Don't know why it says it starts at three. So let's try putting it in the flute. And let's make sure, of course, it's doing Garrison. I want it to do note performer. In fact, I'm going to swap everything to note performer while I require. So, um,. Let's see here. Yes. Um, Jack, does Cubase auto backup? It does, yes, but I think you have to save it first. There are settings that you can have. Um, so if, if it were to crash, it would have a backup. If I were to exit without saving, it probably wouldn't, which really sucks. Paul, yes. <laughs> Paul, yeah, yeah. And I'm glad I caught it because... If this had been like a four-hour stream, this is this is gonna be like a six-hour stream. I'm calling it right now, six-hour stream. Um, and if I had lost all of it, I'm telling you right now, I would have just quit. I was like, all right, people, I'm sorry. <laughs> come back, come back next week for another one. Um, Shipshaker drag and drop MIDI. Uh, uh, Pierre, have you considered switching notation program to Dorico? I have. I've heard quite a lot of good things about Dorico. I would like to. It's just uh, new software is expensive in both time and money. So I would need the budget money-wise, but then I'd also need the budget time-wise, meaning that I'd have to have the time to actually learn and master uh, using a new note notation software. I originally got Finale because it was the cheapest option with my student discount. And there are lots of things I like about it, lots of things I don't like about it. And, but for now, it does the job. 
Uh, because most of the time, like I said, my main thing with Finale is just orchestrating. So I will orchestrate everything here and then I will export it as MIDI data and just put it into my orchestral template in Cubase. No performer, no performer. Uh, no performer for violin. Almost done. No performer, no performer. And then that's something I actually need to be double checking. Can you guys actually hear this? Can people hear that? Yeah, it's very low in volume. Yeah, sorry. Uh, finale is just for whatever reason super low volume. Um, uh, let's see here. Alto recorder or flute? I don't. I, uh, let's see. For the MIDI import section, you need to drag and drop. Um, this is why my orchestra sounds classical or metric error type. Uh, awesome. Let's see. Alto recorder or flute? Yep, I think that's what we're gonna work. So if you guys can hear it, that's good. Um, but why these are the wrong notes? You guys will notice, aren't they? Yeah, it's supposed to start on A and it starts on F. Y'all notice that? The sketch starts on the right key. Um, let's see here utilities, view. Let's see here. So it's supposed to be document, uh, edit, preferences. No, nope, wrong one. Here, where am I going here? So let's first, let's swap it to music spacing, add view, um, document. Where is it? Where is this? It's supposed to be, is it in file? I want to see how to change it into concert view. I know it's one of these utilities. So display colors. I think I'm getting closer. Man, um, select layer document display and concert. So you no, know, it's already set in display and concert pitch. So maybe it's just the key. Um, uh, the key signature. So let's try switching to C major. Oh yeah, there we go. That fixed it. Transpose. We'll go up an octave. And so let's do just a quick dynamic marking. Do a mezzo forte. We'll get rid of these pedal markings. We'll add a little bit of just some slurs in here to make it feel a little more lyrical. I think the I think the flute works. It's very very soft. I apologize for that. Let me see if I can get the mixer to increase the volume at all. Just um no, that was the reverb. So we'll leave the reverb off. How's that? That's not clipping on the All right, good. So yeah, we're good. Hopefully that helps. 
All right. So we've got the flute assigned to the first one. Let me get caught up on the comments. Uh, what is the current... Uh... Okay, so up here, it is super easy to make the sketch in Dorico in their pretty new piano roll editor mode. Oh, definitely. Uh, Dorico is made by the same people who do Cubase, I believe. They're very compatible. So, yeah, if I had the chance, I'd probably upgrade. Um, we'll see. Uh, if sales do well, I might upgrade. Like I said, I have to have the time and I'd have to have the budget to just kind of get a new notation software. So if... If you want to help your boy get a new notation software, again, you can go to my store. Today is the last day of the sale. Why? There we go. Last day of the sale, and you can get... Why is the internet so slow right now? Uh, let's say the sale, you can get all of my textbooks. Where did all my textbooks go? My computer. I, I, I hopefully, this is an internet thing. Whatever. So my, my website's acting up. My, most likely my internet here at my home is acting up. I have books that you should be able to get. There they are. Um, you get all these. This is the worksheet work, uh, workflow that I'm using for this live stream to compose this music. You can get a textbook that carries all of the lessons I have to share on composing. Books on emotions. All these really cool things. Kickstart your composing career. Uh, lots of fun. Cool stuff. So that's how you can support your boy and how I can get some new upgraded software. The current software I am using, Debra uh, Day, is Finale. Uh, Finale notation software. Paul, do a 24-hour stream. I'll donate $100. You won't. You're right. I'm not. Come on, dude. $100 for a 24-hour stream? My hour, is, my time is way more valuable than that. I like to sleep. I like to eat. I like to go out for walks on nice days. No, no. Come on. You, you joking uh pierre the elements version is great about 100 or so the pro version is expensive as hell i believe it that tends to be the way with me thing oh wow i have fallen way behind in comments right it's all very, very long comment, right so people can hear you have a very quiet <laughs> paul i swear oh uh, no is messes up with this yep what's good about finale always hated its layout the layout is pretty bad for finale but finale is a powerhouse there is, if as long as you can dedicate the time to learn how to do it, Finale can do things that the others can't do in terms of just uh, sheer versatility. You can do a lot more experimental notation, a lot more like uh, um, pedagogical notation, I mean like notation for teaching music in Finale than you can in the other files. Uh, yep, so there we go. Also, we got that caught up, free door of those. <laughs> I, I, yeah, if I get Dorico, I will, I will, I will hit you up for that because I would like to learn them. Yep. Yeah, so lots of Dorico fans, lots of Dorico fans. Um, yep. Excellent. Go to MIDI and increase the overall volume. Audio track, VST banks, human playback, resign background device setup. Um, not sure where to do that. Uh, but anyways, I think it'll work. Uh, let's see here see here um so we've got the melody let's look at the worksheet all right we want it super simple and immediately memorable so we've got a solo melody and minimal support so if we go to our structure over here we have where is it where is it? okay my computer is acting so slow now right oh here we are so we've got this so now we've got the baseline so the question would be what instrument do we place in the baseline i'm gonna say so we need something that's not going to overpower the flutes we need something that can create a nondescript yet emotional performance in the background i think i'm just gonna go with the celli for now Let's try posting it in the celli. Let's delete all these pedal marks from my piano. I should have deleted those from the MIDI at the beginning. So let's, let's, let's set this to about mezzo piano. Why? Why is my cello a why is my cello a tuba? Uh, let's just do real quick. Reassign playback sounds. Oof. Sorry. Uh, 
There we go. That sounds like it's a solo cello, though. Yep, solo cellist. Let's go to cellos, full section. So why is this? Okay, so it should be cellos. So let's just do reassign. Mm, sorry about that. Don't know why it's sticking to a solo. So we've got that. Let's get rid of this top note down here. So then let's actually go to pianissimo. Or not pianissimo, piano. No, mezzo piano is probably good. We'll leave that. And then let's see here. <laughs> um... Let's see here. Uh, I'll give some free Dorical lessons in the future. That looks awesome. I'll double it, go to the next person, double it. Oh, are you talking about like the live stream? Oh, no. I am not doing a 24 hour live stream. I might do one in the future. I wouldn't be against it in the future, but not today. I'm just not prepped for it. Um, Sarah, so anyway, Muse Score got no room for this. Uh, yeah, Muse Score. Yeah, Muse Score is pretty powerful, though. Muse Score is a good notation software if you're getting started out. VST Banks. Oh, thank you, Shipsaker. So that's where I'd find it in the VST banks. Uh, can, you, uh, can you recommend any source where I can learn how to use Finale? Uh, YouTube is a great resource. And uh, yeah, you can find a lot of stuff there. Uh, wow, I'm getting... Thank you, people. All right, awesome. Getting some super chats. I appreciate it. I think... Nice. <laughs> this is awesome. Oh, yeah. So yeah, let's celebrate your first super honest live stream. Thank you, people. Um, VST Banks, uh, get a Subway. Get yourself a Subway sandwich. Thank you, Paul. Uh, it's not cello, it's a Cuba combination of cello and tuba. Or a tello. Uh, don't forget to save it if your computer is playing up. Very true. Thank you. Thank you, Xayu. Thank you. Um, <laughs> there we go. Awesome. Appreciate the super chats, guys. Alright, so... Let's see here. Um, so we've got the bass line. We've got the celli. Now we've got a flesh out. Um, so then after that, we had our bass line. And then the last four measures, we had this idea. Which I think, should we just, let's try the clarinet for this one. Two, three, four. Let's try it here. We'll have to delete some of these pedal points. It's very annoying. Um, but let's do. Oof. Let's try fleshing this out of it. So apparently I've got a lot of my cousins in the comments. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. So we're getting here. We're making a little bit of work. I like having the clarinets. We need to. I'll have the mezzo, I'll have mezzo forte and the solo clarinet. So now that we've got this next section, we've got to start. We can start moving in. I'm going to add. Let's start adding some rehearsal marks. The, you wouldn't really want to do rehearsal marks on every single section when you're doing a um when you're doing a uh, actual score for performance but i'm just doing this for to help keep track of where i'm at so actually where was it um john mack reminding me to save yep <laughs> all right so let's see here let's go to documents let's see here uh, finale files. Let's go to five year anniversary. All right. So thank you, John Mack. Thank you. 
Thank you, M. Jack. Awesome. We're getting lots of super chats today, people. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Thank you for the generosity. Um, let's see here. So the next section we've got, we're going to repeat the melody. Um, yeah, we so we repeat the melody, repeat the bass line. So let's focus on the melody here. So let's do, let's take the melody. We will repeat the melody in the flutes. And I think I'm going to add it to violins. I will raise that an octave. Octave. We're going to leave that there. So we'll have that. Uh, then the bass line will leave in the Shelly. Uh, let's check out our map. What was our map? So we wanted to start getting bigger, start adding more complemental material, make it more rhythmically active without pulling attention from the melody. Melody, bass line. We can start... We'll leave, we'll leave the bass line as it is. We'll keep the violins... We'll have them be a little softer than the flute. But now we need... Um, let's see, where are we? Then we have our counter melody idea that was developing. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We'll copy this. We'll leave this in the clarinets, I think. We'll leave this in the clarinet and we'll add it to the violas as well. Start strengthening this texture a bit more. The violas are a great instrument to double with the violin. They both have a very rich, warm quality to their sound. We'll try adding this to the violas. And we'll keep this also on mezzo piano. So let's give it a little so a sound from the top again. So starting to take shape, starting to take shape. All right, so it's starting to take shape. Let's start taking these notes down, actually. So typically when I'm making a map, I like to track the instrument choice as it's coming along. So we'll just say map part two. In fact, actually, let's put this down here. Start orchestrating your map. Uh, Pierre, it sounds peaceful and nice to me. Thank you. Uh, is this the old version of Note Performer? Possibly. I haven't updated Note Performer in a year or two. Um, I don't worry too much about how realistic it sounds at the moment. Uh, where am I? Where am I? Ah, here we go. And I just focus mostly on the arranging. So... Section A1, very small, intimate. We'll say equals small and intimate. So we've got the size, we've got the texture and everything figured out. So we'll say melody equals solo flute, bass line equals celli, and harmony equals clarinet. So the next section needs to get bigger. We have a few more layers. And so what we went with was melody equals solo flute plus first violins. Uh, then bass line equals celli. 
And harmon counter melody equals solo clarinet plus violas. <laughs> Getting in a bidding war between my cousins. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. I really appreciate the super chats. This is really awesome. I really do. It gets me excited. So thank you. Um, melody solo flute plus first violins based on Shelly counter melody solo clarinet plus violas. I feel like there's more we could do there, but we'll leave it for now. So now we're going to go into section B. We need this to get larger. So we have the complexity come back down. I'm thinking immediately. And again, we're not worrying about transitions just yet. We'll go through and fix the transitions as they come, as we wrap up. But for now, let's actually document view. This is getting very annoying. Why is the view, why does it say this is measure three? Oh, whatever. Well, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We'll just add a double bar line. So wait to one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight. Bar line. <laughs> Hashtag winning. All right. Okay, so now we've got our next idea. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's see, bar line. We'll do double again. So we've got our melody here. And this one's going to sound a bit more. We need to make it sound larger. So far, we've been using strings and woodwind. So I think this is a great chance to bring in our first brass instrument so our range here goes from about e5 to about b5 that's a bit high for most of the brass so we'll have to drop it an octave but if we drop it an octave this should actually fit quite well with the french horn the french horn's ideal range is between this is uh, ideal range is between E, uh, F3 and C5. Let's raise this up an octave. So let's go to measure 17. That sounds pretty decent. Let's do more slur marks to create a bit more lyrical performance. And then I think for the melody, in fact, let's just focus on the melody moving forward. Let's focus on the melody for now. Let's have the French horns and the celli play this together. It is driving me crazy that this... Why is it a soloist? It should be a cellos. And they should all be... So the double basses should be a section as well. Contra basses. Viola should be violas. Violins should be violins and not soloists. Uh, we should probably get rid of these choir libraries too. Don't plan on writing for... Vi for we need to have dynamic markings for these and dynamic marking for this and again why is my computer not responding it should be So what I'm going to do, I'm going to drop this down a little bit so it doesn't do. Let's do reassign playback sounds. Yeah, why is this changing? Okay, so what I'm going to do. Oh, I know what's going to happen. I need to put in violin section. That's what's going on here. That's the tricky part about using templates within. There we go. That should take care of it. And now that I've done that, now we can do reassign basic playback. There we go. That should do it. Let's raise this volume up a bit again. 
There we go. A different timbre, different sound. Alright, awesome. So we've got that. So we've got... So section B1, we'll do melody equals celli and horns. And then what were the other layers for this section? We had... Let's pull this up. Let's find out. So for B1, we had... Let's go to the full one. We had just the melody and then bass line. So yeah. We had melody, and then we'll just put down bass line. And we'll leave that for now. For now, let's create more. Let's create a larger, uh, just focus on the melody. So let's see here. Let's see here. So we've gone from solo flute to solo flute plus violins to celli plus horns. And we need to make the sound even bigger. So revisiting our second section oh yeah we have the we have the oh, alarms going off we've got the melody we've got the arpeggios we've got the bass lines so let's focus on let's just leave the melody as it is let's use the melody we'll leave the melody in the horns and maybe this time we'll swap to doubling in the violins Take this, we'll add it to violin one, and we'll have it be an octave higher. <laughs> yeah, it's it's been about four hours. So that works for now, I think. And again, right now, our basic focus is just trying to get initial ideas down and written out. So after this, we did... So B section two was... We had the melody. We had the arpeggios and bass line. So now the melody equals... Actually, you know what? Let's get rid of the horns. Let's get rid of the horns in the second melody. We'll instead... Double the melody in octaves across the violins. And we'll add the horns somewhere else. If we add them at all. So we got a nice strong feeling. And then, so melody equals violins in octaves. <laughs> a bidding war. Uh, let's say, uh, so Exayu, I wouldn't say no to more brass and woodwinds. Maybe a nice bassoon. All right. Yeah, let's add, let, let's try that. So let's try adding the bassoon to the mix. We can do that. Um, bassoon, let's add it. Let's add the bassoon on the melody here. Just toss it in, see what happens. So we want to start on measure 25. Let's raise this an octave. And we'll change this, the clef to treble. Yep, and it stays below. So this, this note right here is about the max of what I would want to go with for the bassoon. I like that. Oh, 
All right, so yeah, I like that. Bassoon and violins make a nice kind of pairing for that. So then after that, once we moved on to the melody for section, so thank you, XIU. Um, next for section three, we get back to our melody. We're from our primary theme, which, what was our texture for this one? Our texture for this one was melody, counter melody, our pe uh, pedal tone, kind of triplets on the bass line and bass line. Um, so let's do, let's go back to what that original texture was. Let's get the original melody in the flute. And we need to add a rehearsal mark, don't we? Yeah, so let's add a rehearsal mark on measure 33. Um, so we'll add it in the flute. We'll add it in violin one. Raise that an octave. We'll start in measure 33. Because we want this size to come back down. In fact, let's make this, we're going to do a fun technique, which is called an enriched string sound. When you have a single soloist woodwind, or sometimes you can have uh, multiple, depending on how loud it is, but you set it to play a single dynamic marker lower than the string. So you create a very string dominant sound that gets colored very subtly by the quality of the woodwind instrument that you're using. And I messed that up. I changed the dynamics for the violins and not the flute. Let's do this. Excellent. So there we go. We got that going on. So after that section... Because we want the size to come back down. So we've got melody, counter melody, bass line, rhythmic bass line. Or we'll say pulsing bass line. So the melody, we have flute and violin one. So we've brought the size back down. The texture is taking care of the amount of complexity. Uh, we want to start slowly building again for the size here before we get into the climax. So what if we just, we repeat this section in the violins, we repeat it in the flute, but this time we double it an octave higher. So we'll take, oof, sorry about that people. We'll take this, we will transpose it up an octave and then we will take it and we will add this in the piccolo. So let's start on measure 41. So it should sound like a subtle difference in quality, but it should still sound much stronger. All right, so we're good with that. Now it is time for our climactic section, which should be pretty simple. Uh, our, we have our, it's going to be the largest, so this is where the brass section is really going to shine. So for this one, we had a very simple idea. It was just a chordal texture, right? So it was the melody. So what we can do here. Oh, uh, no, that was back to say. So here we are. We come back down. We've got our melody. Uh, we can add this. I'd say let's put the melody in trumpets. I love trumpets, so we can do that. Um, which measure is this? All right, so what measure does it say in this one? 
So in this one, we're going to measure 49. Okay, so we've got this one in octaves. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, let's copy that. Add it in here. We will add it to the trumpets. Ah, I pressed the wrong hotkey. All right, one second. So copy this. Go back in. We will paste it into the trumpets. Let's get rid of this lower layer. Um, let's see here. So there we go. I've got that. Let's listen to the playback a little bit to add some phrasing. Hold up. All right, got to move it up one measure. That's on me. And we will do... Let's add a few slur marks just here and there. There we go. Any more comments? Uh, uh, we got a lot of family. I was like, uh, Richard Maya. No, welcome, welcome. That they were not late. This is like what, like a four hour. So I started this stream at what eleven. So yeah, that we're on our fourth hour now. At this point, we have sketched the whole piano piece. We are getting it arranged for orchestra now, and my first step for arra uh, arranging it for orchestra is just assigning them instruments for the melody. Now, I think a single trumpet on the melody is perfectly fine, but let's try adding... Let's have it have be two instruments. Technique text. Where is it? Where is it? Um... Techniques, miscellaneous, no. Where is, ah, here we go. So A2, then let's go to window, plugins. Here we go. Finale script. We'll go to note performer. Run script. Ah, sorry about that. Oops, there we go. So let's listen to it now, 49. There we go, now it sounds like multiple trumpets. So we've got that going. Probably don't need the strings joining on that. That is plenty big enough. So for the C section, we have melody. We have chordal, melody, and bass line. So we do have the melody done in octaves. So if the trumpets are doing it in octaves, one very simple solution is just to have the trombones do it an octave lower. So we'll do raise this an octave higher. So Jack says, that notation trumpet sounds better than my Spitfire brass one. It does. Note performer does brass instruments very, very well. I will say that. And for whatever reason, I, I love Spitfire libraries, but for whatever reason, I've always been a little um, disappointed with their brass selection as well. So we've got that. Then after this statement, 
we go to the size comes back down a little bit. So in our keyboard arrangement, our piano sketch, we went from a chordal structure to just the melody and harmony and bass line, right? So let's have the melody now. Let's go from the trumpets to the horns. We will have all four horns playing in unison. So we'll go to 57. I like that. Let's take this and let's double it in the strings, the or first violins to, for added height and width to our sound. So we will raise this up an octave. We will get rid of the A2 because that's not necessary for stringed instruments. And I like the idea of using some more slurs in the strings. Which you have to be careful with this because slurs mean something different for stringed instruments than it does wind instruments. But I have no intention of anyone ever playing this. So I don't care that much. Let's change this slightly. I want to slur the other notes. Keep it bunched together. And then our very last section, our very last section was a return to our A material, our A theme. So I think let's go back to what we were doing before. Let's do the flutes and violins. Where is the last time we used our flutes? Um, let's do, we'll do flutes and violins we'll just pop it up here we'll start with measure 65 why are the violins not playing oh well we'll just add it um oh that's because that's not the right melody where are we um should be right here. So measure 65, flutes, violin. That's not where it's supposed to be. Let's see, move this up an octave. And we'll start on 65 again. All right, awesome. So we've gone through and we've assigned instrumentation for each of our melodies. Uh, first, let me double check what was this. So it was melody, counter melody, and bass line is what this section was. So we will go melody, counter melody, 
bass line. And our melody is solo flute plus violin one. So now that we've got our violins figured out, like our first, our melodies figured out, the next check is to go through and get all the bass lines figured out, is what I like to do. So we already did this for the first section. We've got the bassline on Shelly, bass line on Shelly. So then section two, B1 and B2, we had the melody on Shelly and horns, and we had our bass line. And that was the only layers. So if we go back to our sketch here, we'll see that we came back down and that's right, we have the bass line, but the bass line is harmonizing with itself. So let's have let's have just the celli here. Oh, uh, where are we? So B, C. No, the celli are playing the melody. So the, no, let's not do that. So the melody, let's get rid of the celli on the melody. Let's put the celli and basses on the bass line. So where was this? Um, here we go. So we'll put these on basses and we will introduce the double basses. So we will take this top layer off. So here we go. Let's delete that. Let's delete that. Place this in the bases. And this time we will delete these top voices. But we will have to raise this an octave because the double bass is play is notated an octave higher than it sounds so to get the actual sounds we want it should be notated like this so we'll listen to what it sounds like here You know what solo solo french horn might just work there by itself let's raise the dynamic a bit to forte let's bring these down to mezzo forte and let's take it from the top let's listen to what this sounds like from the top So obviously that transition's gonna need a little bit of work. We're gonna need to touch up that uh, that uh, transition quite a bit. I'm going to change the flute here to be forte as well as the clarinet. We're going to add a little bit of a crescendo here, which just means get louder. So it says, all right, so you're starting at this volume over here, start getting louder until you get to this point where the new volume is. Um. Let's see here. Let's raise these violins an octave. I don't know why those are an octave lower. Let's have them play in unison with the flute. Let's try.
try let's listen back to, to this on nine. Let's add some phrasing for the clarinets to make this a bit more smooth. Add some phrasing for the violas. And I'm thinking something I can do to make this transition a bit better is to start this out and have it crescendo in. That should help. So the main difference right here is we're having this top, the high strings drop out. We're having more low strings enter and we're swapping out the flute and clarinet for a French horn. So hopefully, we're gonna have to do some other things to kind of smooth it out, but hopefully just having these double basses gradually enter a measure sooner can help quite a bit. I still want more of a transition there. Um, we'll come back to it later. We'll figure out what's going on later because that's not the po focus right now. The focus we're supposed to find the bass lines. So then we got rid of, so for A, for section B1, we got rid of the celli on the melody. And we did celli and basses. So then for the melody, in the next section of our B theme, was violin in octaves. So then we need something for the bass line. Which, easy enough. Well, let's see. Well, we wanted the size. So my map, B1. Uh, get larger. So we want to get even bigger. So map 2, we can just keep the bass line in the low strings i think will work well for us so and what how did the texture change here not much we've just got the baseline and in fact you know i'm going to pull this over here instead of copying and pasting i'm just going to write it in let's see here we've got c where are the strings We've got, okay, so we've got a C below low C. So in the double basses, that'll be here. And then it goes E. By here I think it was at the E below middle C and you know what let's just drop this an octave actually so we'll start in which where do we start this let's start this in measure 17. You know what? I think we're already here. Nope. Let's do measure 17.
So we had the violins, right? And we had the bassoons. So violins and bassoons were playing a part in the second part. So melody, violins, and octaves plus bassoon. And I'm going to have this be two bassoons, actually. Since we've got two string sections, we'll have two bassoons, one for each string section to double for strength. Then we've got the low strings playing. And that should be fine. Let's add this. So high strings are on bassoons on melody, low strings on bass line. In fact, you know what? Since we've got a woodwind doubling the uh, melody, let's have a bass clarinet on the bass line. strings are way too long. I think that's just an issue with finale and no performer. Alright, that bass line hit for a moment, but then it stopped. Let's bring these down. Swap to measure 25. All right, so this is measure five of this section so let's revisit the section and see why that did not slap why is that baseline bothering me oof i'm very sorry i forgot So it's fine. I think it'll sound better once the arpeggios get added. Thank you, Jack, for the friendly reminder to save my work. Uh, oh, and to answer your question earlier, Jack, I'm using mostly, I use mostly Spitfire uh, Studio Brass Professional for my brass library. It's, I, I like it. It works. If I need something a bit more epic and a bit more weight, I'll use Metropolis Arc. One and two is what I tend to gravitate towards. Um... This song reminds me of the traveling. Uh, Exayo, it sounds like a uh, nice full sound. It reminds me of the traveling music in Avatar. Ooh, yeah. Uh, thank you. I like that. Thank you. I, uh, man, now I want to watch Avatar. Um, where were we? Um, so, yeah, measure 25, wasn't it? You know what? I know what I can do. I'm going to have the bases drop out so that when they come back, it does have more of an impact.
So let's add some phrasing to this melody. This is a very romantic kind of cadence. I want to make it a bit more lush. Um, so then, measure 33. We are back to our A theme. Um, so melody for this one. Well, okay, well, so bass line. We have cello and basses. So then A3, we have the violins. Violin one on flute on the melody. And then we have bass line and a pulsing bass line. So the counter melody, let's just do clarinet and violas like we were doing earlier. Um, let's see here. We got this. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we will copy that. We'll go here. And so we are on measure 33. So let's put this in clarinet. And we have this be a string dominant sound. So we had our solo woodwinds playing an, a dynamic level lower than what we had the strings playing. So we've got violins one doubling in unison. So let's just do violins two also in unison. Start on measure 33. And this should be a half note. Got a dotted quarter. And I just realized we're doing the counter melody. We're supposed to be doing bass lines right now. So let's go back. So the bass line is... Mm, bass line, well, let's put it in the celli. So the bass line here should be very simple. Um, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do the whole copying eighth notes. So let's just pull up our bass line. Key, I'm going to take this. I'm going to bring it over here. I'm going to open this celly. Uh, and I seem to remember we had decided that we our or I had wanted to do. Uh, let's see, it's going to be A. So we've got Shelly playing this. We'll just leave it at mezzo forte. And then we will have the basses playing this, but we will have it playing at pizzicato, which means it's going to be plucking the string instead of bowing. And then we'll have violas do the same thing. Uh, so this would be the A. So this would be middle C. So this is down an octave. But what we are going to do here is we had, if you look over here, we had triplet eighth notes. So we are going to instead turn this into... Then it was, uh, so then we have D. Then we had A. And then 
then it was D again. So I'm just going to copy and paste this. Then it was E. And then it was up to G. Then we were down to E again. And then we just ended with another E. But instead of being Arco, I think I'm going to have this also be Pizzicato. Where's Pizzicato? Here we go. Let's try raising the volume of this just by one dynamic layer. I think that works. So we'll do baseline equals Shelly and the pulsing baseline equals violas and bases pizzicato. So then for our next layer, which we did not include in here for some reason, getting more comments. Uh, yes, save my work. Thank you. I'm going to save my work. And then, uh, thank you. Okay. Uh, Polish cow. Thanks. Uh, congrats for five year anniversary. Thank you very much. I, yeah, I can't believe all this time has gone by, but I'm very blessed. I'm very happy to be able to do the things that I do. So thank you to all of you. Uh, five years is impressive. Thank you. XIO. And the next year I see a hundred thousand subs. I hope so. That would be awesome. That would be really fun. I know that Ryan Leach, Ryan Leach, who is another YouTuber that I really admire that I know a lot of you guys admire um start like really took off around this level i think that's when a lot of people found him so who knows maybe a lot of people will find my channel this year um yes so 21 viewers make sure yes thank you paul yeah everybody make sure you like the stream uh that helps push it to a lot more people um leave the chat top right and hit that thumbs up okay thank you paul for telling people how to like the stream thank you very much um, so this next section, what were our layers again? So the repetition of our main theme, we had, ah, this is where it was completely contrapuntal. So at this point, I think I will just repeat that. I think I'm going to have the bases and Shelly just repeat and violas. So here we go. So we have that. Um, violin one. Now that I think of it, might not work to double this uh, in this many voices because we have counterpoint lines that are necessary. So let's delete this for now. We'll delete the piccolo for now as well, and we'll have them probably play the counterpoint line. Oh, so we'll say equals violin one and flute. So then largest instrumentation. So then we got the climax. So we've got the melody and tr uh, trumpets and trombones. The bass line. Now we need 
Probably, let's do tuba. Let's do tuba. Uh, let's do tuba and bass trombone. Um, let's see here. So let's again find the bass line. So C, F, A, G, C, D, E, G. Super minimalistic, basic bass line. That's all right. We're not trying to do anything groundbreaking today. We're just trying to write an entire cohesive piece of music in one stream. So then let's drop this down an octave. Let's copy and paste this and, oh, I guess there's no bass trombone in this one and I don't want to go and load it. So we'll just add it in the basses. Let's see, 49. So we need to add dynamics. That's what's going on. I forgot to swap this back to Arco, which basically says, all right, you're done doing pizzicato, back to bowing the string. There we go. I think I will add the Shelly to this one, as well as bring the tuba back here. So we'll go baseline equals Shelly plus bases plus tuba. And so then the last one that just leaves us with the original bass line for our final section, which when we had solo flute performance, I believe the bass line was, yeah, just Shelly. So we'll do the same here. We will take the bass line um, that we used. Where is it? Right here. No, that's not it. Earlier one. Here we go. We'll just bring it over here for the very end. And we'll bring the dynamics down to mezzo piano. So let's hear how it goes so far. We got the bass line, we got the melody figured out. So then the last step is gonna be getting those, well, not the last step, but the next step is to fill out those middle ground. So we'll make a transition there. So if you can see, I'm pulling up the notes. Uh, quick five minute break. I will be back. All right, so I am making this bold. 
Uh, I'm going to go use the restroom, everyone. I will be right back. So I'm just going to hit play. You can hear this. As you listen to this very kind of bare bones arrangement so far, um, take notes. The measure numbers are up here. If you see anything that you think, if you come up with any ideas you think I should try, let me know in the comments, all right? But I will be right back. Yeah, a lot of these transitions are going to need to be smoothed out quite a bit. Hold up. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. I think I made the same mistake. The same mistake that I did earlier with copy and paste. There was, there was supposed to be more pull. Uh, there was supposed to be more pull into that more heroic thing. Let's see, yeah, the last measure changes to G major, from E major to G major. So we go... What is going on here? All right, there we go. All right. Um, so the melody goes G, A, G. Then we go G. So let's see. So measure 48. Our melody goes G, A, G. So Joe, G sharp, A, G sharp, G, A, G.
So then who else has the melody here? That's right, it's flute. So let's just copy this measure. And then it was the bass line. What did we have for the bass line? Uh, it was G on the regular bass line and triplets D on the pulsing bass line. So we'll go. go anything else we just have the baseline of the melody yeah we'll be adding so let's try that Let, that should feel a bit more pull into that section i mean the transitions are still going to need to be addressed that's still a step to come but So I think we get the idea. Uh, a couple comments. Jack, you have more enticing clickbait video titles. Honestly, yeah, I need to get better at clickbait video titles. I know that sounds terrible, but the videos that have them that do my best, that perform the best, are the ones with clickbait. And I like to think that chaotic good clickbait can be a good idea. If it feels like it's very enticing, but I still deliver technically with the clickbait. If it seems like clickbait, but it's not clickbait, I don't know. I gotta... I'm not very good at the YouTube algorithm thing, but I'm good at teaching, so people come by and they stay. Uh, Debraj Day, can you explain in other videos about all the dynamics? Oh yeah, I can do that in the next live stream. The dynamics are very simple. For now, suffice to say that they go in an order. Let me just pull something up here. Uh, let's see here. So, pianissimo, that just means super soft. Piano equals soft. Mezzo piano equals kind of soft. Mezzo forte equals kind of loud, forte equals loud, and fortissimo equals super loud. All right, and that's the basics of it. I can do a live stream in the future or a video in the future where I explain the balance between different sections. Like, how do you make sure, how do you know that the dynamic of like a flute is the same, or how do you make sure that your flutes are equal in volume and quality of sound? To your trumpets or something which is very difficult to do very expensive to do in terms of manpower but not impossible um so yeah we've got the melody we've got the bass lines now let's go through and fill out the rest of our layers all right so here we go uh again you can buy this worksheet that i'm following this workflow uh on my website for like four bucks um everything is on sale on my website as well today is the last day of the sale um then uh, Pierre Bergeron has to leave. Thank you for coming by, though. I'm glad that you were able to stay for so long. And good questions today. So thank you. Thank you very much. I'm glad you could stop by. So let's see here. Ah, it's this one. So we've already got this section figured out. We've got this section fi figured out. We got this figured out. So then the next one would be B2, which we need to find out who's doing the arpeggios. So let's be B2 would be measure 25. Let's add a rehearsal mark here. So they're easier to find. So 25, let's start with 25. So we've got who do we got here we've got violins and octaves plus the bassoons on the melody we have the celli and basses on bass line plus bass clarinet i believe so we've got violins and octaves we've got the cello 
and the bases come in and the base clarinet on the baseline. So we need someone to do arpeggios. For arpeggios, you typically want a nice crisp attack. Uh, not gonna do any. Not gonna do any brass. Oh, you know harp. Harp has been very silent so far. What if we just gave it to the harp? Uh, don't know why I went to that one. First, let's get our arpeggios. So then we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We've got our triplet arpeggios. Yeah, what if we just did this in the harp? Did like mezzo forte. Not sure if I like that. What if we did piano instead? If so, where, where where did I put these in here? We are right here, aren't we? Nope, that's not where we are. Are we in the B theme? B theme. Yep, here we are in the B theme. Um, I had it just above middle C, but what if instead? I took it from the piano, dropped it an octave, and then put the melody also in the piano. do the melody in the piano i'm gonna commit to the melody of the piano let's use an extreme range let's drive it two octaves you know what let's that's hard to read oh why is it three i thought i said two Oh, what's that one? One octave. Here we go. Yeah, I like that. I like that quite a bit, actually. So now the next thing is after we've got those first four measures, we can then start doubling with the harp. All right, so yeah, there's going to need to be a transition there, but I like that. I think harp and piano having the arpeggios works well. Now, something else I should be noticing, I should mention right now. Um, Normally, if I'm doing something professionally and I'm working on a soundtrack, I am much, much more meticulous about this whole process. I am 
double checking and triple checking to make sure that if I have a melody, it doesn't overlap with any layers. I'm double checking for clarity. I'm making sure that there's no kind of... So for example, something I want to point out right now. This arpeggio on the piano, right below middle C, is going to conflict a little, uh, maybe not. Maybe it'll conflict a little bit with the bass clarinet on the bass line. So it'll conflict a little bit with the bass clarinet and a little bit with the cello. It's going to overlap a little bit at points. And if I were doing this for a professional soundtrack, I'd be a little more careful with what instruments I'm doing here and there. But for right now, this is just a sketching process. It's kind of like a fun exercise. And so I'm just picking instruments based off what I think the sound might be good. Then eventually, as I take this and start to make an actual MIDI mock-up of the arrangement, that's when I can start cleaning things up a bit. So and that's actually, I wasn't planning on doing a MIDI mock-up, like taking this from Finale back into Cubase to make it sound like a professional mix in a professional orchestra. Uh, I'm still not going to do that. This is like, what, five hours already in the stream? But I'm not against doing it for a later stream. Is that something you guys would be interested in? Uh, let me know in the comments. If you guys would be interested in me doing another stream like this where I take the finished score, put it back into Cubase, and start giving it to like my sound libraries and adjusting it to make it sound nice and cleaning things up, let me know. Um, piano and harp, chilling bass is a bass clarinet. So we're good. So we're back to the theme. So we've got the flute and violin on the melody. So now we've got a counter melody that we need to figure out where to go. So... Why don't I just give the mel the counter melody back to the clarinet? I kind of like having the clarinet paired with the flute. I don't know. Would that be too repetitive? Um. Oh, I already have it in the clarinet. All right, so we're probably good there. So yeah, we're back at the A theme here, and this is where it's supposed to get super complex. So let's add... So we've got the melody. This is where things are going to... Yeah, so we've got violin and flute on the primary melody. So let's do... Let's do violin two and flute on primary melody. Because then we have a counterpoint melody line number two. Which, let's do violin one and piccolo for this one. And let's see here. So the mid-ground for this part, this is the part we need to write in. I'm not going to copy and paste because Finale has both of these in the same track. So I'm going to drag this over here. I'm going to open it up. It's going to block the comments for a bit. I'm sorry. Give me a moment. Uh, da, 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 da. All right, so we've got this. Then we're doing piccolo. So we'll do everything is an octave lower. It does not sound like it's an octave higher. And then and it was E dotted quarter note 
then D. This is interesting. Why is this rehearsal mark right here? Ah, maybe because this is supposed to be back here. So this is supposed to be the piccolo. So I don't know why. Let's see here, flute, piccolo. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the flute. So let's, let's just do utilities, change instrument. We'll do piccolo. Nope, we want to go to measure 41. So we'll do dynamics. This one will be mezzo forte. Let's get this one at forte. And then let's get that out of the way so I can see things. All right, so awesome. So Debrush Day says, love to see the more professional version. Yeah, we can do that. Um, <sighs> Paul Berkmeyer, five hour stream. Can you top my longest one? Eight hours or break? I don't want to. I bet I could. I bet I could do it, Paul. Um, a little healthy competition never hurt, but I, I'm so tired, people. I, I also haven't eaten since this morning. Fortunately, the caffeine is keeping me from getting too hungry. But we'll see. We'll see. Uh, thank you. And <laughs> thank you, Paul. Thank you very much. Um, let's see here. So counter melody one, we got violin and piccolo, violin one and piccolo. So let's take the piccolo part and we're gonna pop it over into violin one. We're going to raise this an octave. We are going to let's get a bit more space between these let's make sure this melody is really coming in strong forte So then we've got that one's taken care of. Bit crunchy at times, but I like the way it sounds. So counter melody number two. We've got violin one, a violin two and flute on the melody. Violin one and piccolo on that. The bass line is celli and the pulsing bass line so far is basses and violas. This is where it gets a little tricky because uh, we are all out of string sections for the counter melody but we've got flute and piccolo taken care of excuse me um what is the range of our second counter melody? i know it's below the first melody so it's about middle c to about a um we'll just give this part to the clarinet um so yeah we'll give this part to the clarinet as usual we will increase the volume
And then this should be a half note. What if I say, well, first let's change this so I don't have the same mistake last time. Um, so this melody ends B, G, B, D, D. So B, G, we need to change this to a G natural. B, D, D. And so then let's add this. Let's say the violas are no longer going to be on the pulsing bass line. I'm going to replace this. I'm going to make sure that this knows that it should be played arco. Meaning that we are no longer plucking the string. We are back to bowing it. And let's see here. So we've got the clarinet playing. We need someone else to do the pulsing bass line so why not give this part to the harp let's try that let's see how this sounds and we can even since it's the harp we can even double this let's actually take this and add it up here and we'll take this bottom one and we will drop it down an octave we'll see how this sounds You know what yes as carl said earlier let's just give everything to the piano i'm going to put this melody in the piano to give a bit more attack to each note and as well as because i don't like having this doubled let's have the piano also play the pulsing bass line Let's raise this though. If we're going to have the piano doing this, let's take advantage of its crazy high range and have it double an octifier. doesn't like that i mean i like the piano part there's something about this phrase that's just rubbing me the wrong way uh, i feel like it it has a lot of tension that it builds up to and then it stops adding tension and it plateaus for a bit what can we do to fix that Let's see. What do you guys think? Thank you. Paul likes it. Uh, we'll move on. We'll move on. I'll save this for later once we're doing like the problem solving section. So some is violas and clarinet. Baseline is cello. Pulsing baseline is basses and violas. Uh, we're say piano and harp. And uh, melody is going to be and piano now so now we're at the climactic part you got the trumpets and trombones and the melody chordal melody let's put that in the horns horns are wonderful at kind of fleshing out uh the brass let's see here no why do i always do that uh we're gonna go over here we're just gonna grab 
Um, never mind. This confuses me. So let's just go see. We've got our chordal harmony. Let's just pull up once again our handy dandy keyboard. Um, I'll pull this over here. And let's start adding this. So the French horns started with a dotted quarter note. G. Drop that in octave. Finale does this sometimes. It's very annoying. There we go. And then we have quarter note, uh, eighth notes. And then I'm missing a note over here. See, I've got a D and then nothing here. So let's see if we can go back to this full arrangement. See, no, I just never fleshed it out. All right, so let's do, what What chord is this? Looks like it's a C major. So maybe just, oops, sorry. Um, yeah, let's just try a C. We'll do, where is it? Oh, got to pull this up again. So we'll do C. Uh, trumpets are doing E. Trombones are also doing E. So we will go C. And we will keep the same. Oops, sorry. Right. Then G and D. So let's go to measure 49. I forgot. French horns in the brass section are significantly weaker than all the other brass section instruments to the point where if you are working with a dynamic marking of forte or louder i mean if you want your instruments playing loud or louder then it requires a ratio of two to one so for every one trumpet player, you need two French horn players. Since we have two trumpet players playing this in unison, we need four French horn players to match the volume. Here we go. So we've got that counter melody is on horns and yeah, so we, we, we've got that. I think, ah, I feel like I want to do something more there. I don't know. My brain's starting to get fried at this point. We're getting, we're coming up on like what? Six hours. What is this? Yeah. Five and a half hours on this stream. Uh Oh, Um, Tamashi. Damn, this ADHD guy has a lot of attention today. So much dedication. That's actually, that's part of my superpower. So ADHD isn't always what people think about, like, the tangents and not being able to focus. ADHD also has something called a, uh, my brain is fried, so I'm blanking. Um, hyperfixation. Hyperfixation meaning that you are able to focus on something to the exclusion of all else for a very long time. And for me, music is the thing I'm able to hyperfixate on. 
I'm able to spend hours and hours. Like for me, I physically feel very tired and I feel hungry and I feel like I'm tired of sitting in this chair. Uh, and part of me is like, oh, I have not gotten a lot of movement into today. But mentally, I can't believe five and a half hours have gone by. All right, it feels like I just got started. I have been loving this mentally. All right, so that is one of the beautiful things about that. Um, so Carl says, regarding adding tension to that one passage, you could have the low strings glissando into the chord change one to two beats ahead instead of on the change. Ooh, oh, and Carl, hyperfixation. Yes, thank you. Uh, here you can finish it up. Yes, I can. Yes, I will finish it. I like that. So Carl says, Carl says for this section where I feel like it's not building enough tension. E. Uh, so about, I think it's like measures 41. If I could have the basses. So basses are pizzicato, so it would have to be the celli. What if I went to glissando? Now, that being said, I'm not even sure if note performer can glissando. I can, I can. That is a really good idea. I like that. Thank you, Carl. So what I'm going to do is the first four measures will be the same. Then after four measures, as a way of introducing some shift, I like that idea. Thank you, Carl. And this is kind of, this is one of the things where a note performer isn't going to do quite the glissando I want to do, but I could change this with sound libraries. I like that. All right. Let's listen to this part. Oops. 41. Let's start with measure 41. I like that. I like that. And on top of that, I got another idea where I could start speeding up the pizzicato of the basses. And this is pizzicato, right? Yep, so it's just not playing back pizzicato as I enter the notes. All right, I really like that idea. Thank you, Carl. I like that. Thank you. Yeah, I like that. That's a good one. That's a good one. I am going to probably need... To, I mean, I got, I got to fix the transitions anyway. I got to trans fix the transitions eventually. I'll probably do that in the DAW later. The Digital Audio Workstation. Cubase. Cubase is my DAW. All right, so let's see here. Uh, can't finish it up. Uh, go get that Subway Boy, yeah. You know, I probably... No, no, I'm not going to order well, yes, but thank you. Thank you to everyone who did the super chats today. That that's I've, I've only ever gotten one super chat in a live stream. I do a lot of live streams. I've only ever gotten one. So that's that's really cool. Like I that really made my day. So thank you guys. Uh Dawson Colliger. I love this channel. The composition sounds so good so far. Also just starting my composition journey and buying your book. What other books would you recommend it for composer? Oh, thank you. So, for my book, I would say honestly all right, this is gonna this is gonna sound hella arrogant. All right, I think 
if you are looking for a book, you don't need a different one than this one. Um, I'm going to explain why. Eventually you will. Eventually you will. I have, a, but I have stacks and stacks of books. But when you are starting out, it is very easy to become overwhelmed with multiple different books, each covering different things. This book, in fact, I have the uh, I have the draft because this is getting I uh, printed got it printed off so I could edit it, uh, and it's being published. They're just taking their sweet time with it, and it's not against any kind of contract to post it up here. Uh, so I'm selling it as an ebook. This book has 35 chapters, and in the very first chapter, it starts you off teaching you how to read uh, read music notation, and by the end, you are making professional arrangements for orchestra so the very first is split into three parts part one is all about music theory and harmony how to create emotional chord progressions that tell a story then from there part two moves on to melody writing and structuring and arranging full pieces and then part three is orchestrating and applying everything to the orchestra how to write idiomatically for different instruments mixing your music and all kinds of cool stuff in terms of uh also, tips for sequencing tips. Sequencing tips means how to make it sound more realistic with a computer. 35 chapters, over 400 pages. And the reason why I say you don't need any other book at the moment, because, again, I don't want to be narcissistic. But in the book, I very blatantly and very clearly say you should only do one chapter per week. All right? I am a big believer that as you study something, you should master it. So I have chapter one. Understanding pitch. We talk about how to read it and how pitch and melodies are used to tell a story. And there are assignments. And I tell you, stick to this for a week. Practice, do the exercises. Do the assignments. Practice. And then after the week, once you've mastered that material, then you add on to chapter two. Then you start practicing and mastering that material. And you just keep going week by week. And if you follow that, or even if you just do two chapters per week to speed it up, that's still going to take you the better part of a year to get through. So I would say get this book. And study this book. Uh, this book was deliberately designed it, uh, by me and all of my own personal teaching style. I put this book in mind to take someone who has zero musical theory understanding, zero performance background, zero music composition background. Just someone who likes listening to music. And if they start with chapter one and make it all the way to the end, they are writing the kind of music they want for orchestra fluently. That was the goal. Then, if you're done with that one, and you can look through the table of contents on my website, it's on sale. Today is the last day of the sale, I should say. Tomorrow, the price goes back to the full price. Um, then, if you want something after that, the next book I recommend is my book on emotions and music. This is the only book out there that was written by a former therapist, me, turned professional composer. Me. All right, this book breaks down the psychology of how and why music portrays emotions in the first place. So why we as humans can hear a piece of music and go, oh, that sounds happy, or oh, that sounds really nostalgic. It breaks that down, and then it turns it into actual, like, steps, actual strategic application for, all right, you want to create nostalgic music. Here is how you manipulate these parameters of music to guarantee that your music will sound nostalgic or to guarantee it will sound angry or to guarantee it will sound and evoke whichever emotion you want it to. All right, this book used to be a class. Unfortunately, given my busy schedule at the moment, I am no longer teaching it. It might come back in the future. And if it, if it does, I'll offer discounts for people who bought the book. Um, but if you want to learn more, you can get it here. I have testimonials from people all over the world who took the class. Uh, Ava was from Austria. We got Austria, Germany, Canada, U.S. Got people from all over. Great testimonials. Lots of cool stuff. So I would recommend that. Then, then if you would like to learn more books, I do have a video that I uploaded. It was a live stream I actually did. A couple of years ago where I recommended books that I really enjoyed. Um, but so yeah, there you go. So that's my little sales pitch. That's my recommendation. Other than that, there are other books I can recommend, but if you are getting my book, I would say wait until you've gone through all of this. Cause then you'll have a better idea of what your style is, what kind of music you want to write and which gaps you want to fill in your education. So hopefully that helps. Uh, Tamashi, we can wait until you get the subway like eat on stream. It's cool. It will be like a mukbang. 
Oh, I'm good. I'm honestly, because of the caffeine and because I'm hyper fixating, I'm not all that hungry. I'm At least I'm not noticing that I'm hungry. Uh, the same thing happened in grad school when I was really involved in uh, research is I'd go like all day without eating just because it didn't cross my mind. So I'm good. So thank you, Carl. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Paul. Uh, in the upbeat section of this, Tomashi says, this leftover wood wins like this would. Oh, thank you very much for the super chats. Thank you very much. Uh, Tomashi, in the upbeat of this part of this section, the leftover woodwinds, like which one was it? Oboe or clarinet could do a upwards run every time after the cello glist. Ooh, I like that. I do kind of like adding that. Um, I might do that. That one would be a bit trickier because it takes some composition. So I'm going to save that for when we move back into Cubase. But I do like that idea. Thank you, Tomashi. All right, where were we? Where were we? Um... Let's look at the map. So we've got this taken care of. Oh, yeah. So we're on the second half of this. Horns and violins and octaves are on the melody. Celli basses and tuba are on bass line. So let's add trombones to the chords. All right. So the mid ground on the second half was... I'll pull this up. And this is measure like 57 or something. Oh, it's starting to rain. Where are we? Where are we? Um, bum, bum, bum. So 57. Nope, that's measure 60. Um, you know, what, let's just listen to where we were. I do like those glisses. I can hear what you're talking about, Tamashi. I like the idea of adding those little runs. So then we're going to bring the trombones back. Um, and this one, which A2, I don't need A2. I'm trying to remember how do you get rid of A2. Um, whatever, we got E. Then we're up a third. Got G. Up at C. Let's see here. A2. Then, it's not unison. I'm trying to remember my music theory. How do I end an A2? You know what? It probably just, we'll see how it works. So 49.
All right, that last one sounds super crunchy. Was it supposed to be a G sharp? Let's see over here. So we've got do 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 do. Um, it was, but I think the bass line is what's wrong. Uh, where are we? So yep, it's supposed to be ending on an E. So let's change the bass line. All right, so let's see, where are we? Uh, French horns are playing that. So C, F, A, those are all good. Then it goes G, that's good. C, D, E. Okay, yeah, so it's just... That last part's supposed to be E. Let's try it again. So then, yeah, that brings us back to the last section. So, a couple more comments. Dawson, you told me. Haha. <laughs> Any idea on when your book will be published? I want a hard copy. That is an excellent question that I unfortunately have no idea. So, the publisher has had my book for two years now, and it's still not being printed. Um, The process is just moving very, very slowly. And so that's why recently I decided I was just going to start selling it as an ebook again. Um, I can say that I've had people who bought it and then just paid like a printing shop to print it off for them before. Uh, that's what I did for this when I was editing. Uh, Cause I also like having a hard copy. So when it came time to like edit and go through, like you can see different chapters where I've marked it up. I know I marked it up somewhere in here. Oh yeah, so yeah, it's with a pen, so you can't really see too brightly. So I won't bother showing it to you guys. But yeah, there are moments where I just marked it up, highlighted, made changes to like change this, change that, whatever. Um, so they've had it for two years. I was told that it was ready to start printing, but I was told that back in early November. Um, and since then, I've heard from my editor like once or twice, and every time it's like, oh, well, we're waiting on this, oh, we're waiting on that, oh, we're waiting for this, we're waiting for that. So it could be in a couple months. It could be in a couple years. But in the meantime, you can get it on my website. Um, let's see here. Uh, Paul, only two more hours to top my biggest stream almost, boy. You can do it. Oh, I really don't want to. But it might end up happening. It might end up, Intellectually, I don't want to, but I am enjoying myself. So we'll see how it goes. Um, I want to fix this transition, but I'm not going to worry about it just yet. We can do that next because we are so close. Uh, trombones. Um, A5 melody is solo flute and violin. Counter melody. What did Wood do earlier? A5 for the A section. Flute and violin. It was... Oh, I didn't put it down. It was clarinet, wasn't it? So A2 was, uh... Solo clarinet and violas. Yeah, so... Uh, clarinet and violas. So, pulsing bass line, violas and bass lines. Um, was it violin two? I think it was violin two. But what we will do here is we will do our counter melody. Let's find out. Where are the flutes? Um, counter melody was in clarinet. 
We'll just add it down here. 65, right? Yep. There we go. We will add it to violins. Well, first, let's double check that we don't need to change anything. What was the ending for this one? Um, mid ground for melody, we had B, G sharp, B, D, E. B, G sharp, D. Uh, so we will raise this up to E. And then end on C. All right, so let's take this. And then the melody, how did the melody end? Because we had to change the melody a bit. So just open this top one. Uh, G sharp, F sharp, G sharp, A. G sharp, A, G sharp, F sharp, G sharp, A. Uh, G sharp, and then it was just... A. And then it was the bass line, which went up to A, then down to A. So C, let's do the violins. C is good. And then bass line was A. So let's listen to this last part. Let's start at 65, shall we? That last one was, oh, where am I going? My brain is starting to be fried, people. G sharp. All right. So this must have been from when we, I must have copied this from the section where we changed to G major from E major. And that's it for the major sections. So the next step, let's just re-listen to the whole thing. And as we listen to the whole thing, if you guys have ideas, throw them in the comments, all right? Because the next step is to clean up these transitions. And then I think we're done. We'll transit, we'll clean up the transitions. We'll call it good for today. And then, oh, it's pouring. Now I can't go for a walk. Oh, well. Um, Yeah, we can do, we'll play from the top. We'll look for transitions and how they need to be cleaned up. And then the next step would be for another live stream. Oh, thank you, M. Jack. Another super chat. Thank you, people. Thank you very much. Um, Yeah, we'll listen to the top. Listen for places where we can fix the transitions. We'll do what we can in the software. And then moving forward, I'll do another stream where I show how to make it sound more professional in a DAW.
right, so <clears throat> while we were doing listening to that, I made a list of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different things that I want to adjust. Eight different things I want to kind of tackle. Um, let's say I want to make a mo- <laughs> Paul, okay, my cousin's having a quarrel in the comments. Uh, Paul says, sounds like a song you'd play after winning a battle with a B-roll of a knight on a horse with a castle. Thank you. I like that. Nice little imagery. When, I, when I'm told that people can imagine things that would accompany my music, it means that the music is expressive. It has evoked some kind of emotion, which is the job. So that makes me happy. Thank you, Paul. So measures 16 through 17. That was my first moment where I was like, all right, we need to get a transition. So let's go to measure 14 and let's listen to that again. So let's see what we're doing. The bass on the bass line has a nice little transition. That's fine. So we go from a very rich texture to just horns. So what if we just day crescendo? So basically telling my musicians at the end, which normally they would do this anyway. Um, but if you just add a diminuendo or a decrescendo, uh, it helps emphasize that you want them to come back down. And then cellos. All right, so let's listen to this again, see if that helped at all. So then the next one was measure 21, actually, where I took a note that it was just starting to get old. I wanted a development. And in fact, this one's very simple. We can just kind of go with a little cliche kind of idea. We can just double it with a solo trumpet. And we'll have the trumpet be softer so let's go to measure 21 nope too early or too late it was measure 17 Thank you very much for the super chats. Guys, Paul and Carl, I got I'm getting so distracted by you guys that I'm forgetting to pay attention to my own music. Uh let's see here. But I appreciate it. Let's see here. Measure 25. So measure 29 is where I made note that I I think I'm getting bored of the arrangement.
actually, I think what's happening here is I don't the bases. I don't like the bases coming in that early. So let's actually get rid of the first two measures of the bases. See how that helps. Yes, it is very much like high school all over again, Paul. Uh, drop from 16 to 6. Like, who all are still here? Uh, it's going to go up and down. This is like a six-hour stream at this point. So people are going to go up and down. It's getting late. So we'll get a good number. go so now we need to do transition from 32 to 33 removing the basis from those two measures actually helped quite a bit in my opinion um so 32 to 33 hmm. first let's add a little bit of a there we go then in the clarinet let's add this as well And then what if we just add a diminuendo again? Expressive text. Diminuendo. Have it come down before it comes back in. Let's change that. Actually, no, we can just play from there. All right, so Tamachi, you say two notes in measure 32. Are you talking about in the bass line? You can try that. Welcome to the chat, Super Mr. Spook. I'm a fan of your videos. Let's try that again. This time, let's start with measure 29. There we go. Yep, that works with a much smoother transition. Next one is 40 to 41. So what this needs is a build-up. And that's something. We haven't added percussion yet. So let's add a crescendo. And we could probably add some builds. But let's see. Crescendo.
we go. Yep, that works. All right, so then let's add a crescendo as well to these viola plucks so that it can go right into uh, a stronger uh, plucks for the piano and harp. So, Tamashi, I see you say bar 31. There should be three notes, not two. Uh, like in melody bar of 31, violin one, twos are like playing two notes if it should be three notes. Uh, let me see. It's a violin one, 31. A violin ones. Hmm. I don't know. I kind of like having just two notes there. I think it works well. Um, let's see here. So then after 40 to 41, the next transition I wanted to address was 48 to 49. Let's see here. So let's start with 44 and move in from there. See what the issue is. All right, so this one be should relatively simple. I think just adding the tuba a couple measures earlier. Uh, so we want it on a G. So let's try measure 44. Yep, it's a sh it's a subtle shift, but it works well. And then let's do a diminuendo on those melody lines and on the plucked strings on the pulsing bass. Diminuendo create and then it was diminuendo so then let's hear how it sounds now that nice transition That works. The only thing we're missing is a big swell from the drums and a cymbal crash, the bam, right on the step one. But I'm going to save that. I usually do my percussion in Cubase. So we'll save that for the MIDI mock-up stream. Uh, so then the next one is 56 to 57. So let's start in measure 53 and see what's going on with this transition. Again, let's just introduce some of the strings a bit sooner. So I'll introduce the celli. So that's a G. And then we'll just have the trumpets and trombones come back down. Mom, 
much smoother. So this one should be a simple enough transition as well. We just do diminuendos. And we're almost done, people. Because of the percussion and like the little like ear candy and doing the balancing and all that, I like to do that in the DAW as part of the mock-up process. So we will save that for another live stream. In the meantime, we'll listen to this transition, then we will listen to the whole thing. Then I'll make a few announcements and we'll call it a day with the longest live stream I've ever done. All right. Too far back, too far back. Let's do two, three, four, 61. we go there we go all right so we're done it only took like what six hours <laughs> six hours to do a full arrangement is it a perfect arrangement is it a complete arrangement no but it's a full length piece of music so the next thing i would do with this is i would export it as a midi file i would open it back in cubase during in one of my templates probably the spitfire studio orchestra template i would get all of the existing parts written out the way i'd want then I would start adding some percussion. I'd start adding in different fills, different uh, kind of... Uh, so I'd probably find a way to use the oboe. Um, and I'd just start looking for ways to make it sound a bit more professional. So I'd start just looking for like orchestral framing, the way to like strengthen the beginning and ending of phrases. I'd look for ways to add maybe some embellishments of the melody here and there. Uh, because again, I feel bad, never used the oboe or English horn. Other than that, I think everybody was used at least once. Piano and harp could probably find a few more uses for them. So that's what I would go for next. So but I think I'm going to call it here. Let's listen to it. Then we'll do some channel announcements. All right.
right. So, I think we're going to call it a day. <laughs> six hours later. Like, what, what, what was this full thing? Like a six, almost six and a half hour stream. So, Paul, I did not beat your personal record. I'll come forward again at another time, though. When I'm more prepared. Because I was not expecting... I mean, I knew it was going to take a long time. I just didn't know how long. So, my brain is fried. Um, we're going to do another stream. We're going to do another stream in a couple weeks where we're going to finish this piece by doing the mock-up. So, real quick, I'm going to save this. Then what I would next do is I would export as MIDI. And then I would open it in Cubase into a different file. One that has my template with all of my preloaded instruments and everything. So we'll do that next time. And then once we've translated everything into sound, that's when I would start looking for different things. Like I want to tweak this, change that. I would add percussion. There are a couple moments here that would definitely benefit from like a drum roll. I think it was like the transition into the brass section, the brassy section. I think that would have done really well with a timpani swell and a cymbal crash to arrive. It would smooth out the transition a lot. So we'll be doing lots of cool stuff like that. I'm excited for that. Um, The rest of this week and next week. I'm taking next week off. All right, I'm going to be out of town. I will be spending time with my family. And so next week I will be off, but the following week I will be back at it. Um, That was announcement number one. Uh, announcement number two. Today is the very last day of the sale. So make sure you go over to my website. Go to the bookshop. Check out all of these wonderful resources and books, some super cheap, some uh, worth quite a bit in knowledge, and they're a bit more expensive. Uh, this one in particular, this one I recommend. This is the one I was talking about earlier. That's this big guy right here that was designed with my own approach to teaching to take anyone who knows nothing about music. They just know they enjoy it. And by the end of the book, they are completely fluent with writing for orchestra. All right, so last day of the sale is today. Uh, you want to buy that before midnight Detroit time. Otherwise, the price goes back up again. Um, then we will be doing, like I said, we'll be doing a mock, the mock-up live. We'll be doing another part two of this stream to kind of make it perfect and professional sounding. Uh, I want to thank everyone who stopped by at some point in these six and a half hours, as well as the incredibly generous and supportive friends who showed up with Super Chats. I appreciate each of you more than you know. I really, really do. So thank you so much, people. Thank you to my patrons. And let's tackle these last couple of things. Uh, last comment comments. Um... Debraj, uh, Debraj Day. Yes, so Debraj, you've been here for the entire thing. And yes, I forgot to do the intro. That's because I typically save the intro for last. And since we're technically done with the arrangement, we did arrange a five-minute piece of music all in one live stream. The final touches is what I like to do in Cubase. I like to export it, like I just said. And that's when I'll add the final, uh, the intro. Once I know how it sounds, once I know how all the little instruments are used and how everything is arranged... That's when I like to find a good personality and a good strategy to introduce or like introduce the whole piece. Uh, Shaw, thank you. Like, thinks it's very emotional. I appreciate it. Tamahashi Dam finally slayed a dragon. Yes. All right, y'all. I'm going to go eat. Uh, I haven't eaten since this morning. I'm going to go eat. It looks like it stopped raining, so I'm going to go get some steps in too because today I've got a lot of steps I need to do today. And I've just been sitting down all day. So thank you. So very much, everyone, for five incredible, wonderful years. I feel so blessed and so privileged and so gifted to be able to do this with all of you. And I'm excited to see what will happen in the next five years, in the next years to come. All right. Thank you to everyone. I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.